Welcome back another week to Jewels for Life podcast. You're tuned in to The Vantage Point. I'm your host, Azandi of Righteous Jewels. And we like to just say every every week, we like to reiterate our purpose here. We like to encourage Nubian Melanonites all across the globe to look at their lives from a different vantage point, a different perspective one that will propel them towards awakening and liberation through action. So we bring on different scholars, philosophers, theologians, professionals. And today we have with us someone who's no stranger to the Jewels for Life podcast. We are very blessed each time he comes on to the show, taking the time out your busy schedule. Reverend Dr. A.J. Varma, we appreciate you being with us today. We want to welcome you back again. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here as always. I'm going to try to be professional, keep my professional. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, well, no, I actually want you today to not be professional. We want the real, the raw, the uncut, the unfiltered. The That's what we told people they're getting. So we need the raw you. You know, sometimes I feel because of the audience, um, because of the members of the Holy Coptic Church or whoever it is that you're speaking to, that you may have to shape the message in a way where it's kind of not so harsh on people. And so we want today here in this podcast, this forum, because this is a, a truth table, right? We like to speak the truth here and we don't really mind how it sounds. So we want you to give us the real, if that's okay. Can you do that today? All right, well, well, I always give the real, but I, I understand what you mean. You, you yes. Know, speak not the, more, yes. you know. Uh, it, yeah. Not as much. Well, I think sometimes it's the time constraints, but I, I understand what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So um, before we jump into the conversation, looking back at the last month or so, we came out of Love, Lies, and Liberation into the Women's Conference. So we had speakers from the Women's Conference, interviews on the Women's Conference here on this podcast. And then we took off last week. We encouraged all our listeners to join the actual conference last Friday. And so now we're back this Friday. So it's been really, really busy for you. And I just want to get a briefing on how was Love, Lies, Liberation? How was um, the conference? You don't have to go into detail, but that's where this conversation today is going. All the questions is really coming from that topic, you know, that perspective of what was covered those weeks. Uh, well, Love Lies Liberation, I think it went very well. It's the third year we've done it. Uh, we look forward to the fourth year and the fifth year. And and it's, I say that because the, the idea of it or the purpose of it is to help to mend the Black consciousness, the Black spiritualness, if you will, as it pertains to relationship, as it pertains to love, as it pertains with to to family, um, you know, the great Baba Henry Clark said that presume everything you've been taught has been a lie, right? And so that means everything we even learned about math, science, English, um, history, religion, everything, the way the the way in which they taught us, and I think the show, the vantage point is, is such is so pertinent for that because it's we've always had the vantage point to me of other people and for the first time in a long time melanated people are beginning to determine our own vantage point based off of the teachings of the great seers and prophets of the latter day the francis crest walsons the baba tomb rays the elijah muhammad and so forth Mm -hmm. so i think love lies liberation went really well good good and then the women's conference that Mm -hmm. uh, that was awesome for me uh to be more behind the camera than anything and, and to see ladies uh, of, of all different age groups, of, of uh, from different countries, um, different hues, but all melanated, uh, having a conversation about you know being a lady and having purpose and what it means, and and it was the first year we've mm-hmm. done it, and I look forward to it growing. And in fact, out of it, there are those ladies um, who are going to be speaking a lot more and doing a lot more. So okay. I think it was wonderful. Okay, great. So there's, because of time, as you mentioned, there's always questions that, you know, goes unanswered because you just can't, you know, cover it all. So today I just want to hit you with those questions. And before we kind of segue into the relationship, women, men, all of that part of the conversation, I want to first look at the state of 
Black people today, the state of Nubian people. And I want to, if we can look at it this way, as we have a pot of poison, right? And in this pot, I want you to give us some of the things that goes into that pot pertaining to our conditions today. And then the last one being sex, gender, how that plays a role and what has helped, you know, what is holding us back. Um, you know, the parts that's playing a role in our, um, I would say failure as a uh, Nubian people and, and not so much the success, the successes that we accomplished, if that makes sense. Um, well, well, first and foremost, I would, I would say that we're not failing not in that way. Okay. We're just lacking a sense of urgency, right? Mm -hmm. There's a difference. You know, if you're, anyone's ever watched sports, whether it's uh, true football, what we call soccer in America, but what's true football, uh, African football, or American football, or or basketball, you know, those games where you're on the clock, and you know the team kind of plays around, moves slow. They don't really have a sense of urgency, and then. When there's like five minutes on the clock, now everybody's making the passes and the kicking and the, and it's just this like urgency now because we know we're running out of time, so we're moving. So I think for us, it's not so much we're failing, is we just don't have a sense of urgency, and I, I believe that that would, or I have to say that that would tie into this idea of this pot of poison. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the the old adage, the fruit of the forbidden tree. Mm -hmm. We have spent the last, and this is just going from like the end of the 60s, right? The early 70s to today, mm -hmm. when uh, affirmative action and desegregation and these things, which they understood what it was going to do. We didn't. Uh, in fact, Dr. King said, you know, afterwards, he said, I think I, I, I've taken my people into a burning house, right? His, he mm -hmm. was never fighting for desegregation. He was fighting for separate but equal. Right. He was fighting for the idea of we are separate from you, but we want all of the access, like the Chinese, like the Japanese, the Asians, the East Indians, the Arabs who come, we want the access to funding. We want the access to, to neighborhood, you know, to the policing for us, by us. That's what he was fighting for. And so the poison pot began with desegregation. The poison pot, as you call it, began with um, what they call desegregation, which was now Number one, the ridding hmm. was with the ridding of uh, the schools, right? With the schools, uh, uh, with, with black teachers, with um, uh, you know, with, with black teachers who were teaching black children and focusing on the black mind and educating the black mind, and that kind of involvement in helping the young people. You lost that because now your mm -hmm. kids were in schools where they were dealing with um, uh, uh, teachers who didn't like them, right? Who were working to to actually to to miseducate them. So miseducation right. became a problem. Okay. Okay. So we have miseducation. Right. So mm -hmm. miseducation was the first part, right? As it moved from miseducation, then it was the idea of we can go work for everyone, right? Because now that you could shop in all the stores and you could work for everyone, they were, uh, we, we, the black stores started closing down because now that, you know, you were now taking your black business. So black neighborhoods all across America, all across England, all across the world, places where everybody had to go to shop with the black shoe repair man, had to go to shop with the black seamstress or tailor, had mm -hmm. to go and buy goods from the black grocer, had mm -hmm. to go do, and, and that kept black families and the money was circulating within the black community because mm -hmm. we could not go outside of our community. Now they were making it fashionable and given, and it wasn't just they was like we were stupid where they say, well, just come to our stores and we say, oh, buy black stores. No, they were able to buy things at a cheaper rate bulk, thus sell things at such a knockdown price, or they would give loans, you know, to people to buy mm -hmm. on credit. And so mm -hmm. this this whole system began to siphon business away from black neighborhoods, and that was the end of black business right? okay. abundantly. So yeah. again, that's that poison pot as you refer mm -hmm. to it. So mm -hmm. we had miseducation, we had the, the 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 death of black businesses, and of course, if black businesses die, black neighborhoods go under, melanated neighborhoods go right. under. And right. because everyone's now moving, right? right? If you're busing my child to another school, then I might want to live in that area. If mm -hmm. you're 
Um, if my if I have to come near to work, then I've got to figure a way to move closer if I don't have a means by which to have an automobile. So mm -hmm. and I'm being late for work. So this was understood. White mm -hmm. landlords or, or Canaanite landlords knew that they could now give you worse housing, but because of proximity to where you work, you have to take it. Okay. Yes. Right. And again, mm -hmm. so that's the poison pot as you referenced it. Mm -hmm. So all of these were steps. And then now they created as the great Francis Cress Walson, B.B. Francis Cress Walson wrote about in the ISIS paper and the great Neely Fuller, Baba Neely Fuller spoke about in his compensatory, the counter racist code of race relations. He, you know, both of them spoke of, and many others, right? Uh, Elijah Muhammad, Baba Elijah Muhammad, mm -hmm. they spoke of this idea of as things moved from industrial work where men were, you know, were needed because you're now working in factories, having to lift heavy things, beams. Black men were working. Now you could desegregate. And of mm -hmm. course, the natural jobs was office work as you move from manufacturing into this uh, more business offices and things of that nature. White men were not going to hire black men. They hired black women. They created these mm -hmm. different programs by which black women could get educated, could you know get their certifications in secretarial work and the black secretarial industry took off and now black women were working mm -hmm. and black men were as always without a job, right? Because mm -hmm. this was the system, again, right. the poison pot. This right. is going to now destabilize. They had what was called the Moynihan Report. Patrick Moynihan mm -hmm. was a uh, senator from New York City, in fact, uh, or was it Boston? Or was it, I think it was Massachusetts. But anyway, uh, yeah, Massachusetts. And he was uh, uh, taken, you know, the Senate had him do the research. You can go online, the Moynihan Report. And he said this was purposely done to destabilize. He, they, the U.S. government didn't like run from it. The Moynihan Report actually says this is what we did to destabilize the black family, admittedly. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. said, because my guy now, so, so it must be true. So must be true. Uh, um, this is what we did to destabilize the black family. And so now this begins to happen. So a lot of people who were working now got to figure a way to hustle. Mm -hmm. And that's going to lead you towards things, gambling, mm -hmm. right? Which when we were doing numbers in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, oh, illegal, illegal, illegal. Mm -hmm. A lot of those numbers runners were putting black people through school and different things of that nature. Mm -hmm. When the white man saw how numbers were ran by blacks, the Italian mafia, the Irish mafia, and the uh, 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 Anglo, what they call white Anglo-Saxon Protestants or wasps, they saw it and then they went and they legalized it and created your various states' lottery systems. The mm -hmm. lottery systems in the UK, the lottery systems in, in America, those systems were looked at black people, black men who were the original bootleggers, the man who made the gym beam uh, uh, alcohol that people drink, the Bacardis, the rums, the, they were black people who were the original people making these quote unquote alcoholic beverages that white people were buying. So they right. first knew to make it illegal or the Italian mafia and certain other uh, Europeans were now going to try to monopolize it and squeeze, you know, Eddie Murphy did Harlem Nights, though it's a, a comedy, the reality of it was based off of truth. Right. Okay. Yes. So they took, again, black businesses. Mm -hmm. It was illegal prohibition. Black people were the ones controlling it. Now we were going to legalize it. Mm. So black men were now sent to jail for bootlegging. Black men were now sent to jail for illegal, quote unquote, gambling. White men would now legalize bootlegging. It becomes Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch, Michelob, right. Heineken, right. German families taking the black idea, going to the Senate, going to the Congress, paying some money create a syntax, white people making money, white people making money, black men in jails. Mm. From the numbers, same thing with lottery. Same mm. thing just happened with marijuana. Yes. Right? Same thing just happened with mushrooms. Mm. All these things, and I'm not saying that we should be selling marijuana. The point I'm making is things that black people were doing because they had no choice, because they couldn't get a job, but these men were taking it, the Bumpy Johnsons and these guys were taking the money and then creating businesses, legitimate businesses, just mm -hmm. like the Italians, mm -hmm. just like the French, uh, the, not the French, the uh, Irish, mm -hmm. just like the Scottish. They did the same thing and now you are now in jail and again, white boys right. are now making millions of dollars to, to do legal marijuana, medical marijuana and the mm -hmm. like. So mm -hmm. This again, that's the poison pot. Right. I'm not blaming them. Right. right. We understand that they're being who they are. Devil's the devil. Can't change the devil. Right. 
Mm -hmm. I realized Muhammad said, all that are born and not and those not yet born are the devil, always have been and always will be, and you cannot reform the devil. And I stand with that, right? Mm -hmm. And Baba Ray taught us the same thing. Mm -hmm. So the reality is this is something they've always done where we fail, where we fail, if you if you want to say we're failing, mm -hmm. right? If we are going to talk about failure, is to have a long memory. Okay. Right? We have a checkers memory. Mm. Right. If you ever play checkers, is you know, tip tip and right. jump, jump very, the very short. And if yeah. you say what happened, you know, how'd you beat the person? Very few can remember. We need to develop a chess memory, mm -hmm. right? Where you, you retrace history. History mm -hmm. is not just to tell you how great you are, history is to tell you what mistakes you made, as Baba John Henry Clark taught, and where those mistakes were made so you don't repeat them. Right. right? Our yeah. tactics have to change. When you're up against an oppressor, the oppressor's tactics have um, adapted mm -hmm. to us. We yeah. have to now adapt to their tactics and be preemptive towards liberation. Yes. That's what I would say. Okay. So how, how does, we're going into the relationship part of the conversation. So how did sex, how was it used as a part of that methodology? Well, okay. The same thing again. Right. The idea, and it's going to sound crazy, but and I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the 50s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, mm -hmm. the 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 and, and I'm not saying legal. I'm just saying because of what we had to do, mm -hmm. there were black madams. You know, when, when people say Madam C.J. Walker, mm -hmm. that word madam, you know, black madam C.J. Walker was the first to make a black business because she made the hot comb. True. But where did she get the money to do the legitimate business of the hot comb? Mm. She was a madam. Well, I don't know if everybody else knows what a madam is and what it represented, but she had to run a brothel originally. Mm. And the main patrons of these brothels where black women having no choice had to sell their bodies in order to make money. This was from slavery times in mm. order to make money to then go legit. You understand? Mm -hmm. So this is and, and and this is where the idea of white men being called hunkies. They were called mm -hmm. hunkies because they used to come to the black neighborhoods and when they wanted a girl, they would honk the horn. Bam bam. So we started calling them hunkies, the men who come and when they honk to get a woman. This is this is this is mm -hmm. documented, not like I'm saying something, you know, yeah. so unique. But again, this is where the sex roles begin to start to turn because we're being forced into a condition, but we're being forced into it, but yet not forced into it. We're being mm -hmm. forced into it because someone's removing discipline out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking prostitution because I've said many times where prostitution begins mm -hmm. is where they begin to change the way in which we look at our bodies, yes. at the body of black men, at the bodies of black women, and how we choose to dress. Mm -hmm. No one wants to be told what to wear. Mm -hmm. Clear. Got it. No problem. Mm -hmm. But when the fashion industry, gay men, homosexual men are making tight pants for men, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 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 knee high looking like the pilgrims, right? The, the men are wearing capris. And, no, this is real, right? Mm -hmm. When a man is wearing pants that stops at the bottom of his calf that are mm -hmm. tight or a little bit higher than his calf, looking like the pilgrims coming off the Mayflower, right? <laughs> With, no, this is real. I'm, yeah. I, I know I, I, say, I tell people, I say I talk in a way that sometimes sounds funny, but I, I'm saying it as the reality, because when you see it, you go, yeah, it does look like the pilgrims, mm -hmm. right? And they're mm -hmm. walking around and wearing tight pants. The, the, the gay influence, the homosexual influence in the fashion industry, that mm -hmm. is by design. Because it serves multiple purposes. It serves the purpose of ensuring that the black male sperm count is going to drop. Mm. As much sex as the black boys, young black men in their 20s and 30s and 40s and, you know, and teens are having, mm -hmm. why is the pregnancy rate now dropping? Mm. No one's asking that, but it's dropping, right? We know Europeans are struggling to have babies. They average one child per family, and that's globally. Some mm. point eight, point nine certain countries, less than one child per family. So we know they're on a clear course to um, what they call it when, when an animal becomes extinction, right? Mm -hmm. they, they're facing extinction level. That's nothing to do with us. That's their own mm -hmm. uh, poison pot, as you call it. But <laughs> When the fashion industry does that, and then they take prostitution clothes, 
clothes that were prostitutes wore in the 70s and the 80s and the early 90s. Mm-hmm. If you, and not that I picked up prostitutes, but I grew up in the South Bronx with prostitution at Hunts Point, prostitution mm-hmm. at Third Avenue. Prostitution was normal. Hmm. I grew up seeing Alicia Keys when she did her song. I remember the days when I was alone walking down. She she literally raps about the ghetto story. So I grew Mm -hmm. up in that Bronx that she's singing about. Mm -hmm. So prostitution was everywhere. And prostitutes dressed a certain way. Prostitutes Mm -hmm. sold cleavage and they wore lingerie and they wore fishnets and they wore all of the things that's now fashion. Mm-hmm. And they've done documentaries, they've done the research. And so now the sex, our, our concept of sex, and, I, and during Love, Lies, Liberation, I, I try, I try each year. Uh, mm-hmm. We all try each events that we're doing, the, the ladies of purpose, mm-hmm. they tried uh, on Wednesdays and Sundays, the different uh, priestesses and advisors who are teaching and priests and elders. Mm-hmm. Everyone's trying. We're doing our best as most conscious organizations are. Mm-hmm. But when we started to... You know, the people who can't reproduce, I've said it and I'll continue to say it, a a Mm -hmm. group of people who struggle to reproduce have to redefine sex's purpose. Mm. Those who can reproduce understand the ultimate reality of sex, that there can be a a conception or Mm -hmm. impregnation. Mm -hmm. Once that's understood, then you kind of have to approach it with that in mind. But when sex is just about pleasure because I can't reproduce, Mm -hmm. And we as melanated people all across the globe have now chosen to begin to see the world from his perspective, from his vantage point mm-hmm. and operate from there. Hmm. We start damaging who we are. OK. OK. So I want to flip this. So we're going to go. Okay. Now it's time to go in. <laughs> so I want to speak about some of those things we didn't get to touch on during Love, Lies, Liberation. And you mentioned the word pleasure. Right. So there's this thing, you know that females say, you know, pee power or vagina power, right? And that type of power that it should have over the male. Mm -hmm. And now is that just what, is that across the board for any type of male? We're not talking just lustful men. What is the true power of the vagina? Okay. Well, first of all, when you use the word pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. The word pleasure has as its root, the word leisure. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's the root of the word pleasure, leisure, right? Uh, uh, or leisure, depending where you are. And mm-hmm. it has to do with more of a sit back and kind of, you know, relax and let it happen. Just seem, you know, that type of approach to, or relaxation, vacationing and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Now, when this idea and this was they had a whole thing called the vagina monologue and white women, men from Mars, women from Venus. Um, these are books I remember reading, you know, coming up. Um, and, and this was this idea of the female, and this goes back now before the white people did it, we in Kemet, we in Tamaray, the Niger Delta culture, now River Valley civilization, we overstood, we had a saying called mind is the activator, sex is the motivator. Mm-hmm. A man's mind when properly activated, a woman's mind when properly activated are drawn towards each other for the purposes of sacred exchange of energy or sacred energy exchange. That was the way we had it. We understood that all of us as men, we come out of the wombs of our mothers. Mm-hmm. We, we, we mm-hmm. suckle on our mother's breasts anywhere from birth up to sometimes age five, some even age eight in certain cultures, which was perfectly natural and necessary. Mm-hmm. And so there was an affinity that that oxytocin that's created that love hormone or the bonding is not even a love hormone. It's mm-hmm. a bonding hormone between mother and child, the mother's mind that men were programmed to want. That was that's what nature says to want to be with that female. And like the lions and other creatures, the desire to mate with that female makes the man in his right mind step up, become, is driven, is motivated. And the power of the female wasn't like, oh, look at, you know, power, vagina power, not in that sense. But Mm -hmm. if you want to be with me, you've got to you got to rise. You got to show that you're better. You've got to show that you are of a different fiber, different character. You know, the Michelle Obama and the Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. To be with her, he had to move from being the guy with the hole in the floor of the car, though he was motivated, though he was intelligent, though he was educated, though he was grassroots. Mm -hmm. She took him 
because he wanted to be with her to her church with uh, Pastor Jeremiah Wright, Black Liberation Theology, and while well, the rest we've watched happen and are still viewing it take place. Mm -hmm. So his desire to be with this highly intelligent woman, she wasn't offering just her body because he could get that anywhere. Mm -hmm. She wasn't offering just, you know, some play because he could literally get that anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. She was offering consciousness. See, but that's, offering... that's where we want to get to. Right. But right. that's okay. not quite where everyone is. So even oh, if you not. have a man of affluence and he, you know, is traveling and he's doing, you know, whatever it is that he does, whatever his profession is, and he's approached by a woman and her having the ability to change his decision making or to, you know, whatever that is just because of her vagina. That's what I mean. So, no, I'm, I'm okay. saying, well, the ones you want to get to, she don't have what? No, women don't have that power. No, mm -hmm. as I said, she took him to her teacher, mm -hmm. Jeremiah Wright. The people in the streets, right? Regular people, regular folk, right? All of us in the streets. Mm -hmm. We've been taught that she has the power. And that's been a kind of a setup, right? In that sense, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, this man wants me. But here's the reality. If that were the case, then look at the condition of the race. Mm -hmm. What is the definition of power? If that's power, what's the definition of power? Sure. Yes, yes, you got the power to make this man want you. And once he's had you, quote unquote, then, then what? what? And, and the, then what is what no one's approaching, right? Or no one's addressing, I should say. No one's addressing the then what? We as the Holy Catholic Church of the Black Messiah, we understand or we advocate the idea mm -hmm. uh, towards liberation that we have to put certain things in order. Mm -hmm. We have to put our spiritual power religious power a mm -hmm. woman's true power is a young uh, artist her name is john nine and she says a a a a, a spiritual a, a um, spiritual right, is woman the, is, right, is the greatest most threat to the, status the greatest quo. threat to the status quo mm -hmm. and so that is where the power is mm -hmm. if it's just vagina for vagina because the abundant of females that are out here that competition no one's ever going to win that Right, mm -hmm. because there's always a new vagina is like a factory, right? Because there's more women. I don't. I know yeah. I said it like a factory. I don't know, but because there's so many women being more women being born in most mm -hmm. countries, especially amongst the black race, there's more women than men. It's just the way the numbers are. And mm -hmm. so, if it's about vagina power, women are fighting and they're going to lose that. So it's got okay. we got to change it. Go ahead. So, okay, so even when a woman does possess, you know, that um, intellectual, you know portion of herself and then she also has the sexy physical and then she has the you know all these different mental physical spiritual emotional right does she have the power or the ability i should say to change a man or are you coming from the perspective that a woman can't change a man i'm coming from the perspective that if a woman is a part of something mm -hmm. greater than her mm -hmm. organization family business, family, again, family, organization, group of people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that man wants to be with her, that organization, family, group, church, mosque, synagogue, that has the power to change that man. But if that woman mm -hmm. believes I'm going to take this man and merely me, my opinion, my feelings, is going to make that man greater than what he is. Now, can she control that man? Yes. Many women have men that they control. Control and how? What, well, control. Come here, sit down, do this, here, go over here, but who you, you know, kind of bossy and bossing that man. And, there, and there's a certain type of man that accepts that role. But if that woman wants to go further than that type of man, then that man won't suffice. But if it's a man of purpose, if it's a man that, uh, uh, and I'm not talking about just money, right? Because that will come. That always comes. Mm -hmm. But if it's a man of purpose, if a, a man of purpose, even First Lady Michelle Obama spoke about it, her new book, which she talks about, there was a point they were going to get divorced. She said, because I didn't sign on for him to be the one, right? But mm -hmm. she said, I had to redefine and understand that, yes, you know, he's going to have to lead now. You mm -hmm. did your part. Now mm -hmm. help him. Right. And the story, again, we're still learning each day how it develops and grows and it's going to, you know, towards their ultimate legacy. 
So again, a woman, yes, a woman can have a man that she can control. If, if, if the idea of an uh, an alpha, if there's such a thing, and I don't mean a European alpha, which is muscles and brawn and an alpha with intellect with gold, no female is going to control that type of man because that type of man already has a goal in life. He may not know how to get to the goal on his own, so he can work with you and. Together, you can facilitate his goal and your goal can be tied into his goal and you all achieve greatness. Right. Michelle Obama, First Lady Michelle Obama had goals. She was a partner in the law firm, but where she's now surpassed what she was as a partner in the law firm. Because she helped him achieve his dream and he placed her as the first lady of the world. And from that now, New York Times bestseller, and she's just, and, and if she wanted to run for president today, I'm sure she'd have a, a mm -hmm. really great shot at it. If she mm -hmm. wanted to join anything at this mm -hmm. point in her life, people would die to have her, right? Mm -hmm. Why? But that's because only because she's tied into him. He's because not, yeah. he can't, you know, a man can't tie into a woman's goal. She has no. to tie into his goal. Again, right. uh, the type of man, I, I mm -hmm. can't say a man can't. Okay. There are beta men, there are uh, uh, theta men, there are there are men of lesser quality that can tie into that goal that a female sets. But most of the females who have ultimate goals will not be happy with that person long term. Hmm. Because there's, there's a point where it's like, okay, what do you think? Whatever you want to do. Well, damn, no, I'm, I want to know what you think about what we're doing, I, you know. <laughs> Right. Because because, again, you know, a lot of men were raised by by single moms. I was raised by a single mom, but my single mom was not a mother that was coddling us. Right. She didn't have the, the nipple in our mouths. And you know, we were walking around mm -hmm. with it in our mouth. She was like, no, you are a man. This is what you have to become. And put me around men like my godfather, Isaac Lawusu, who taught me no. You're a man. You're an African. This is what we do. This is what we don't do. This is what we tolerate. This is what we don't tolerate. This is how we rear our family. This is how we do. And gave me the play and said, you don't waver off of that. This is our mm -hmm. culture. This is our mm -hmm. custom. He was Igbo from Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. And so he said, this is our custom. He didn't teach me, I'm Nigerian, you're Liberian. He said, we are African. He would say, Amadu, we are an African people. We do not say, and that's how he talked. Right? And so it drilled in my mind. A, my mother would say, go work with your godfather. On the weekends, if I didn't have a sporting event to go to, godfather is, is, is doing the roof at Mount Hope Place, 18 or 20 or Clinton. Go help him do the roof. Godfather is laying floors. Go help him do the floors. Godfather. So we, we understood my godfather, which was the only grandfather I've ever you know met for mm -hmm. me or, or known, Mm -hmm. Whatever he was doing, we were doing. Okay. And we just needed to know which of his tenement buildings he was at. And mm -hmm. if there was nothing to do, we'd go there and he'd say, sweep from the fifth floor down in the hallways, clean up every bathroom on every floor, mm -hmm. mop from the top to the basement. Mm -hmm. When you're finished, then come downstairs. He would sit with us. Mm -hmm. He would buy, he'd send me to the donut shop, right? Us, us to the donut shop. And would come. He would only let us get old-fashioned donuts. That's what, to this day, I still eat them, right? And he would make us a cup of tea with one cube of sugar and and put milk in it. And we would sit there. Or if he was cooking, he would boil a chicken and broil it, you know, in the boiler pot. Mm -hmm. And he would sit. We only were allowed to listen to Ten Tens wins, all news, all the time. And he would discuss the world and business. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we, uh, uh, from that generation, we had men mm -hmm. like that uh, influencing us. So okay. that type of person, you already, you've been programmed. I wasn't looking one day to hope to get a wife and to hope to have children. I was taught from day one, you will get married one day. You will be a father. You okay. must learn to cook because you will marry a woman or women who may not be able to cook African food. You will have to teach them how to cook. This is how you saw. I used to sit for my mother and pat my hand on the sewing machine thing so she could sew. She showed me how to sew, how to mend a sock, how to crochet and learn how to do doilies. Mm -hmm. She said, you got to know how to do all of these things. Hmm. Meanwhile, unfortunately, my sister wasn't getting that same memo. Hmm. She was being taught, Musu, Elizabeth, you must go to school, you must get an education, so you won't have to depend on no man. So we did the, the dichotomy in the black families, and it wasn't just my family, where hmm. girls were being taught, get an education so you don't have to depend on a man. Men mm -hmm. were being taught, get an go get an education so you can support your family and such and such and such. And so right there, there's a disconnect. Right. So 
when a, when a woman today, black woman, melanated woman, a lady of purpose, et cetera, says that I want a man, we've got to all, myself included, go back mm -hmm. and come again. Mm. We got to go back and come again. Because when black men, oh, black certain, when certain black women say black men are nothing but boys, they're right, but they're wrong. You mean the type of black man that is attracted to you is a boy. Mm. Well, of course a boy is going to be attracted to a dominant female. And I don't mean dominant as in intellect. I mean dominant as in domineering. Because he comes from a domineering household where the mother... <laughs> and so he's been made effeminate. Thus he's seeking that type of female in his life. But if he was made to and grown to be a man, then he's not going to be attracted to that. So even if, because I've seen guys, yeah, go ahead, let's go. <laughs> I've seen, no, I, could, I could hear you trying to like, no, <laughs> ask the question. I've seen guys that has, you know, their upbringing was not so like the mom was domineering. She was, she was very calm. No, when I, say domineering, very, I don't just mean it, yelling and screaming. She mm -hmm. never took the nipple out his mouth. Okay. So she's still okay. That's domineering. Okay. You got to let him fall. Mm. You raising a boy, let him bump his head. And you don't always got to go, oh, come in. Sometimes you got to go, you bumped your head. If you don't pay attention in life, you're going to bump your head. Okay. I can because see that. he needs to understand that. Okay. Right? Protector or, 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 or one who shields the family has to understand that mistakes cost. Mm -hmm. you, you, you understand? A man has to understand from a little boy, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up, that mistakes in life cost. Now, I'm not saying don't teach your daughters the same, but there's a way the messaging is slightly different. But for a young man, mistakes cost. Mm -hmm. So if I say don't do that and you do it anyway and you bump your head, well, mm -hmm. now we got to let you know, well, this is what not listening to those who mean your best interest cost you. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean. I don't mean domineering like my mother was, you know, my mother, right? <laughs> she was a black mother. Right. but she knew when to let us grow. Right. When I had a cut, she didn't bring, oh, let me get a kit. She went, go get the alcohol. Oh, stand up. You're okay. It's going to burn. Yes, it's going to burn. That's how you know it's an antiseptic. So it's the difference burn. between how and so, it's made yeah, and it's made. Right. So, okay. but if she was like, oh, let me blow it. Let me kiss it. <laughs> no, you okay. No, that, wouldn't, that, won't, that won't make a male that we need, we need a certain type of man today. We, mm -hmm. we need more of a certain character. I'm mm -hmm. not saying we're not soft when it's, it's necessary to be soft. You know, I was mm -hmm. raised and my teacher, Baba Tum Ray taught us, he said, be lovable, but never fall in love for it's the fall that's going to hurt. Be compassionate, be lovable, be mm -hmm. soft, mm -hmm. be gentle when mm -hmm. it's necessary, when it's required, when the situation okay. deems it's fit, right? Mm -hmm. There's times that you can't be that. Mm -hmm. Not because you don't have it in you, but there's certain times or situations that that won't suffice. It won't get the job done. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, through the 80s, et cetera, a lot of young boys were being raised in single parent households that were not allowed to develop that, to cut their teeth. Okay. And so we have a generation of men that are easily broken, hmm. easily broken. Just the simplest thing happens. Somebody dies whole. You're like, dude, people die. It happens. <laughs> Not that you shouldn't cry, right? People die. Yeah. I love, I cry. But mm -hmm. you're crying to the point where you, you know, you're no longer functioning. Right. The real world, mm -hmm. life and death are the two realities. Everything that's that born will die. If that's you're born, true. you're going to die. Okay. So, we've got to kind of change that so speaking because you brought up a good point and i see males and females alike that leave relationships and they're unable to deal with the breakup process right so this concept of bonding and 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 not being attached to a person to the point where you know it's two years down the line three years down the line and you're still in your feelings well so, no 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 the, I, the reality is you bond so be careful who you bond with. Mm. That's the, the, you understand? Mm. The, the, go ahead. Let me, let me let you go ahead. Let me, I'm going to see where you're going. Uh, no, be careful who you bond with. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Be careful who we bond with. Once you bond with a person, it is a bond. It's a chemical bond. When chemicals bond, they bond. That's why it's called a chemical bond. That's true. So you can't put hydrogen with oxygen 
mm -hmm. which makes water, H2O, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden say, I don't want water no more. <laughs> and we're going to just tear this hydrogen and this oxygen apart. It doesn't work that way. But you can change its, its state. You can change it. How? Okay, the same way you have water. You can boil it, right? It, you can boil it. You can right, but it's still H two O. Okay, so what? Still, so then, the, the hydrogen and the oxygen is still in the ice. The hydrogen and the oxygen is still in the steam. The hydrogen and the oxygen is still in the water. You've changed its shape and appearance, and you energy cannot be destroyed. Mm -hmm. It can only be altered in its state and appearance. So you can't destroy the hydrogen. You can't destroy the oxygen. When they've become chemically bonded, you can't change that, but you can alter what it looks like. So in relationships, people come together. You are who you are. He is who he is. But you're trying to alter states. That's where we fail. Mm. But tonism doesn't yeah. teach about altering states. It changes about altering the character Putting the state, there's times you need to be ice. The relationship sometimes needs cooling off, period. Mm -hmm. The relationship sometimes needs steam, something to motivate it. Mm -hmm. The relationship sometimes just needs to be still. The relationship sometimes needs to be fluid. Mm -hmm. When we understand that, we can change that fire and ice. When they say this person's sign is water, <coughs> excuse me, and this person's sign is Fire, knowing mm -hmm. when fire and water to alter those states, that creates the fluidity. And then the relationships work. But okay. you can't change the bond. Go ahead. You okay. can break up. You can't change you, the bond. <laughs> so breaking up, right? Because there's stages of death, right? I read before mm -hmm. and, and you spoke about it. And these stages of death that's taking place after a breakup. How does how can you use the example you gave of the chemical bond? What is supposed to take place where now that bond can, whatever happens with that bond that is not causing so much back and forth friction between the two people. Why can't we go our separate ways? You do live your life. I live my life without it being, you know. Problems? Right. Problems. Well, because, <laughs> because in that bond, if the person, okay, oxytocin receptors, the body I has like oxytocin crazy, receptors, by the way. That's what I right? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. And, and those receptors if my receptors get programmed to this young lady and because of uh, 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 wanting sex, right? Well, we, in other words, because we sleep around with everybody, right? Everybody's body count, men and women, we've got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever the number, 1,000. One girl had 2,000, different discussion, right? But because of these high counts of sleeping with people, people are burning off their sex energy, put it a different way. The chemical, the body's ability to bond, the, the body's ability to create oxytocin and certain other chemicals, mm -hmm. it becomes lessened, right? If I keep slapping my hand over and over and over for a thousand times, I mm -hmm. can eventually create a callus, right? Anybody's ever worked outside with a shovel or anything of that nature or a rake, if you don't have on gloves, after a while of holding that thing, you get these little calluses on your hand. Mm -hmm. That callus becomes like a numb spot because if it's, if any man who does construction, we have these kind of callus on our hands and mm -hmm. it becomes a numb spot on the hand. You can it has sensation. But if you touch a callus, it's not the same sensation as the rest of your hand. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens in relationships and copulation. Mm -hmm. You can create a callus mm -hmm. and you even use the term and say this is a very callous person. That's why they use the term. Mm -hmm. They're a person who's now numb to the chemicals. So if I'm now been with this lady or been with this man and I've created a chemical bond and because I've burned out my sex energy or burned out the chemical uh, ability, the body's ability to create that hormone or chemical, now I'm attached to this person. Doesn't mean that person's attached to me. Mm -hmm. person has moved on. They may not have burned out their sex energy, but I burnt out mine. I'm now finding that I only, I can no longer create, I, nothing, don't feel the same. I just, you know, the way she did it for me, I don't, you know, and mm -hmm. that, and people will say, oh yeah, man, that, you know, he whipped or she's whipped or they caught up. No, it's not that. It's the body has now identified a pheromone, a chemical makeup of this individual from the smell to the touch to the taste to the sounds, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. of this individual, 
And now I'm numb to anyone else. So if that person reached level eight with you, that means in order for to deteriorate that bond, the next person has to reach level nine for you. You, you understand? Or the next person has to add a chemical to the bond okay. that wasn't already there. Okay. Okay. If you take hydrogen and oxygen, it makes H2O with water. Mm -hmm. But if I add an element called deuterium, I make something called hard water or heavy water. Okay. Heavy water is what they use in nuclear power plants. If there's ever a meltdown, they've got to send this thing called heavy water because the mm -hmm. radioactive uh, isotopes of the, of, the, of the uranium will not dissolve that water, right? Regular tap water goes on uranium, psh, immediately it's gone. It does nothing for it. But mm -hmm. the deuterium, when it's added to hydrogen, when it's added to oxygen, it creates this thing called heavy or hard water. And this heavy water can then keep the power plant from going into a meltdown, right? You, people can look that mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. um, so the new person coming in has mm -hmm. to add something different has to add a different chemical composition, different pheromones, different diet, mm -hmm. different mentality, different music, different... Everything has to change so that that new person and this woman or that new person and this man, they're creating a new chemical bond. Okay, so with that being the case, right, if you can possibly from... Can you explain the stages of death and at what point can that new person come in and add that new bond? Because it can't be done when a person is still grieving, when a person is still, right? Am I right? Or right. Wrong? Well, yeah, the stages mm -hmm. of death, right? In medicine, mm -hmm. is a thing they call the stages of death. Mm -hmm. uh, when a person is inside of, um, before they go to hospice, right? O older people. You can mm -hmm. tell when their time is coming near. Your grandmother, grandfather, they're at home. They're really they're laughing. But then they start getting to a point where they're not hungry. Mm -hmm. They eat, but they just eat maybe two spoons. They're not depressed. There's nothing to do with them being depressed. Mm -hmm. Their body systems are beginning to shut down. Right? You have 14 systems of the body. Those systems start shutting down. So a year or so before the person under natural causes of death, systems of the body, they're not eating as much anymore, mm -hmm. right? They're not drinking as much anymore. Um, they sleep longer or less, depending on their sleep patterns. Right? If they were a person who slept a lot, now they don't sleep as much. The mm -hmm. body systems are changing. The respiratory, they breathe different. Your grandmother or grandfather may have breathed, and now they start going. Mm -hmm. It's a slight change. In medicine, they teach this. If you doctors recognize it, they go, hmm. her, her circulatory, respiratory, his system is beginning to change. It's mm -hmm. shutting down. Their mm -hmm. emotions, if they were a person who was very emotional, they mm -hmm. stopped being emotional. If they were a person who wasn't emotional, they cry about everything mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You follow? The mm -hmm. body is going through these stages that are leading to the ultimate shutdown where they're going to go to sleep and they won't wake up again. Well, mm -hmm. that happens in relationships, right? Mm -hmm. When people break up, we go through stages of death. The initial is I'm going to be all right. Don't need you. Going to be all right. Whatever. You know, I don't need no woman. Don't need no man. Power. I'm a boss. You know, I'm going to find me someone. Got, you know, we put on our new makeup, got new heels, men get new <laughs> clothes. That's real talk, right? Mm -hmm. We all do it. Right. And we're going to go out here. And we're going to save the world. That's sub. If, if you're that way inclined, most people do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Even though behind the scenes. <laughs> right. But publicly, okay. I tell the world I'm strong. The person calls you. You're good. Mm -hmm. That's a stage of death. Mm -hmm. Now, once that stage is going through in the beginning. Right. I'm going to be all right. I'm tough. Then it's a I got to call you. Reach out. Hey, you know, I, I'm not calling you. Start no trouble. I just want to see. You know, um, did I leave my shirt? You know, weird stuff. <laughs> right. You still got that uh, that that hair dryer? I don't even got no hair, but I'm calling for a hair. You still got that hair dryer that I left? Right. Weird stuff. Right. Men and women. We, this is this is how it happens. These are stages of death because you're seeing some women will say some women will sleep with the guy one last time mm -hmm. because you you want to you're hoping maybe it'll spark something. I know I don't want to be with him no more, but maybe one last tug of war, right. right, may cause me to feel something for him again or vice mm -hmm. versa. Mm -hmm. That's a stage of death, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're holding on to this thing. 
you know, maybe, you know, the, the first time we was together, I felt this way. I don't want to be with him or her no more, but maybe if we do this one last time, the chemical bond will click and we'll, right? That right. if you're that way inclined, but it's a stage mm -hmm. of death in the relationships. Mm -hmm. We moved from that now, we went from I'm, I'm going to be all right, to a little bit of crying, to one last time, to mm -hmm. weird calls on the phone, to mm -hmm. then now the person gets angry. Now I'm mm -hmm. pissed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She's the B, he's the he's the end, and the, the thug, and the this, and I like, hate you, can't stand you. His mama, I don't know why she gave birth to him, or vice versa. So right. now there's a little, there's anger, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then there's a rejection period. It's another stage of death in relationship. That rejection period is, I don't want to even know you exist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I wish you would just go off the bridge and <laughs> oh, I hope the road opened up. No, this is this. Should have never met you. Okay. Right. You know, I can't believe, you know what I'm saying? What was wrong? And, 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 and this is another stage of death. Now, at any point in that, if another person comes along mm -hmm. and they have the right chemical bond, mm -hmm. that person will shift. Okay. But if a person is, as we get older, and I don't mean age, I mean older is in our experience. If that person... Uh, who comes along is either like the other person, mm -hmm. that person can chemically bond to them, they move on, or triggers a different kind of character, that person moves on, or some people never are able to move on. They're locked onto that person for life. And they'll always talk about, yeah, my first real love, and yeah, you know, I made mistakes. So, and it's not that, is they no one else has been able to reprogram or, mm. or, or give another formula to this person as it comes to, again, chemicals. Every experience, every reaction, every thought is a chemical. Mm. Every word you speak is a result of a chemical in the body. Okay. Every movement is that you can't move if the chemicals for movement doesn't doesn't take place. You mm. can't laugh if the chemical for laughter isn't triggered. Mm. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that marinate for a second because when we come back, I want to still get into these chemicals. Um, I've watched the interview where you said love is an illusion. Love itself is an illusion. So we're going to talk about that and some other things that really kind of might hit a little different for some people, but we got to talk about it and we don't have much time. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. Um, hope that my co-host is ready. We'll take a commercial break and we'll be right back. Get tuned in to the Vantage Point. Mm -hmm. But how do you balance it out? Do you take a couple deep breaths? Do you go out and enjoy nature and just be still? Do you prepare your children? Do you make vivid plans and goals? Do you use supplications? Do you just clear the space around you? With JHC Incense, you can realign your world and just set the tone for your day. Like the smoke rising through the ethers, let your mind and thoughts change your environment. JHC Incense, get your scent today. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Vantage Point. What I would like to do is I have a page from the book Love, Lies, Liberation. Now, those who are tuned in for the first time, um, this book is what the Love, Lies, Liberation event this year and the past years have been based off of. And so I took a page from the book. If we can share it at the time, it will be great. And I think it will kind of help us segue into this illusions of love conversation and the hormones that you've been speaking about. So um, we're going to share it at this time and it's the other page not this page we're going to get into this later too but it's the other page please and as she brings that up here we go it's a little blurry for me but I can read it for you if you want. It says, what do you mean when you state that fear feeds fear? Yes. This means that fear... Oh, it's gone. Let me see. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Let's see if she brings it back up. If not, I have the book, so I'll go to it. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. It says this means that fear overexcites or overstimulates the mind. Mm-hmm. So much so that out of real, it's gone again. Okay, I'll let you read it. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'll go to it. Bear with me. I think this was page four eleven. I want to say. And as I put, as I bring it up, right, you did an interview in London or with the um someone from London, and you spoke about how love is an illusion. And so I wanted to see if you can elaborate on that. And and you were saying that it's really just a chemical, rea- um, just a hormonal reaction, right? And so can you please speak about that? And then I'll bring up the page and I'll read a little bit of it as well. All right. The page is on the screen now if you wanted to go there first. But um, uh, when mm-hmm. I, when I, let's read it, right? This means that fear overexcites or overstimulates the mind. So much so that out of real circumstances, which one does not overstand, the emotional brain, the amygdala, creates imaginary situations in which a threat, love, and false belief appears, which only exist in the imagination. And though the perceived threat or benefit in the case of romance exists in the imagination, most members of humanity end up accepting what is surreal as being real, thus increasing their fear, not just of real threats, but of imaginary threats too. Additionally, Fear also generates worry because we try, uh, and you'd have to pick up from there because it, it left the screen. Okay. And although the perceived threat or benefit in the case of romance exists in the imagination, most members of humanity end up accepting what is surreal as being real, mm-hmm. thus increasing their fear, not just of real threats, but of imaginary threats too. Additionally, Fear also generates worry because we try to mentally anticipate all of the threatening situations while looking for the way by which to come out of each one unharmed. Yes. So when I'm hearing this, I'm thinking about a couple different things. One, we spoke about the illusions of love, but also when when we kind of make this story up in our mind and we hear things that haven't been said and see things that haven't been done and, you know, that whole thing that females go through um i won't say males and males and males, and males. Yeah. okay and so can you please just go a little bit into that on exactly what you mean by this right when i say when we write that love is an illusion i'm not saying there's no black love i'm saying the thing that we have come to label as love the thing that we've come to see as love Mm -hmm. The idea of what we've been made to believe is love that we've picked up through romance novels as we picked up, you know, because you have the urban reads, you know, the Fatu and Fatu and love. And and then you I don't I don't know all the the, my mother used to read Joan Collins. And I used to kind of like I read it like I don't understand why this this book means so much to her, these books. Right. But these books on love, Mm -hmm. these movies on love, you know, the the uh, pretty woman and the. You know, and you know, friends with benefits, and all these kind of weird movies of of so called European ideal white romance mm-hmm. is not real. Even the show Friends, this one dates that one, and that one dates that one, and everybody's dating each other, and you sleep with him, and then you sleep with her, and you sleep with him and her, and then you leave, and at the end, everybody gets married happy ever after. That is not <laughs> real, right? My friend can't sleep with my girl, and then you sleep with my girl, sleep with me, and then after, after, and you, and no, at some point, somebody can be like, I don't want that girl, or I don't want that guy. Mm-hmm. That's just the reality of it. And so mm-hmm. the, the illusion is not that there's no love. The illusion is what we're calling love is illusionary. It does not work in that way. Mm-hmm. True love is first understanding what the body is. To understand what the body is, I need to know what the mind is. The physical body is the visible representation of the internal mind. If I look at a person physically, I see what's going on inside their head. From their makeup to the glasses to, you know, how they dress, how they walk, how they talk is a visible expression of the mind. The mind is who we are. Right. Mm -hmm. We look at the body and we come to identify with the body. What we know is actually the thing that's in the body that we identify that we really love. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Right. Because if not, we'd all be in the casket with our loved ones going with them. You, mm-hmm. But we're smart enough to be like, all right, bye. Right. We're going to miss you because the thing that's inside the being, the entity, the energy, mm-hmm. the being of each person is energy. It's electricity. It's a current. Mm-hmm. That's the thing we come to love and want to be with. The body that surrounds that is a reflection of that entity, that mind. So true, what we call Africanic or love, is the loving of the entity, the being. And if that entity or that being, what stage of development are they or are we at in our life to know? Mm -hmm. And then we go from there. But this Mm -hmm. illusion where a person meets someone, says, oh, my God, he's so cute. She's so fine. And this is the person. This is my soulmate. One of my favorite (laughs) things when I hear people say, this is my soulmate. I'm like, some people got about a thousand soulmates, right? They every, a new soulmate every year. So, and it kind of diminishes the idea, the original idea of a soulmate or a connection, right? If we know what the body is, what the mind is, then we understand chemicals. Body has certain chemicals, adrenaline, uh, testosterone, estrogen. Women have testosterone, not as much as men. Right. And men have estrogen, not as much as women. Shouldn't be, right? Oxytocin. And kinefins, endorphins, mm-hmm. uh, cortisol. There's so many uh, hormones in the body. Mm-hmm. Once we understand that and what makes those hormones trigger and what those hormones cause us to feel, mm-hmm. then we, cannot, we can be in a p- better position to not allow our feelings to override the reality. Mm-hmm. That's what we're saying. Mm-hmm. But because most people, even many probably will listen to this, but who ain't got nobody, who, who got time to be worried about what chemicals? The people that are tired of getting their hearts broke, right. the people that are tired of seeing their children get arrested and lynched, the people that are tired. If you're those people, then you're going to make the time. But if you're happy. It don't got to be that complicated. It don't got to be that deep. You know, we got right. the same but, things but it, in common, the music, the. Yeah, but it has to be that complicated. All of these but it has to be that complicated. Mm. It has to be that intense because mm. you're binding DNA. The ultimate, and as we said in the beginning, the ultimate is bringing two people together or two organizations together or two businesses together. We do it with everything else. Hmm. If you had a business and I had a business and you said you're going to come together and and we're going to form a corporation, we're going to ask each other a lot of questions. We're going to investigate because I don't want to inherit your debt. You don't want to inherit my debt. There's questions. Well, marriage or relationships is a business. Hmm. If you're not sure, try to get legally married without getting a business license. Excuse me, a marriage license. Now you understand. If it's not a business, then why are they licensing you to do it? You only give a license to a business or something that's going to be practiced. There's medical mm-hmm. license. Yes. yes. There's a policing. You have to get a, a, a state certified to become a police officer. You got to be licensed to carry a gun. Mm-hmm. You have to be the health department has to license you to open up to sell mm-hmm. food. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to have a rating in America. There's an A or a B or a number right. 199 mm-hmm. in England. They have the a same, a, sim, a different, slightly different, but similar system. Mm-hmm. So everything you do in life requires licensing. Mm-hmm. But yet we don't understand when it comes to families and relationships, we got to have something that licenses us. For us, we say, Holy Cryptic Church, our scriptures, mm-hmm. our doctrine our teaching, our babies, our babas, the great black women, the great black men of this last 100, 200 years who've given us guidance. Mm -hmm. Those things license us. And those people took the time. Francis Cress Wilson took the time to write the ISIS papers and Mm -hmm. to do the research. Marimba Andy took the time to write Yorugu. Clonora Hudson Weems took the time to write Africana Womanism. Shaharazad Ali took the time to write the Black Woman's Guide to Understanding the Black Man and the Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. Mm-hmm. B.B. Amy Jacques Garvey took the time to write Africa for the Africans, the philosophy and the pains of Marcus Moshe Garvey. So these women and men like them took the time to do the work and we're too lazy to take the time to do the reading. Right. And then want to know why the condition of the race is struggling to change. We're not losing we just don't have a sense of urgency. Hmm. You know, when, when, when we really want something in life, we get very urgent about it. Mm-hmm. When a child wants a cookie, they will drive you crazy. Mm-hmm. Mommy, can I have a cookie? 
Mom, you gonna have the cookie? So, okay, when you finish, oh, I finish my homework, can I have the cookie? <laughs> okay, I'll give it to cookie. It's like, well, you, smart. you said once I finish my homework, okay, I'm coming. Well, now I finish. We know when to be persistent. Mm -hmm. Now we need to take that same persistency mm -hmm. and apply it to our lives. Like I said, use that same energy. Okay, I'm so I'm gonna hit you with a series of questions. All right, I'm gonna try to get through it as quick as possible. So, since you're speaking about that illusion, is a, the concept of your mind, he's mine, she's mine, whatever it is, that concept, is that part of the illusion? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, yes and no, but let me tell you what I mean. Okay. Mine for what and towards what? Hmm. Right, Michael Jackson had a song with Paul McCartney, the doggone girl is mine. And they were both arguing, no, she's mine. No, Paul, she's mine. Mine for what and towards what? Mine, mine just to take as a world. trophy. This and, is him. This is my child. Right, this is ours. Right, this is right. mine. Like that. But my, that. Again, and yeah, and that's for most people, that's a trophy. Just mm -hmm. like you got trophy wives, you got trophy husbands, and you got trophy children. Some people live vicariously through their child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? I didn't, I didn't become a doctor, so I'm going to force you to become a doctor. Instead of encourage you to become a doctor, I'm going to force you to want to go into medicine. I'm going to force you to be this thing instead of helping you become what you may be engendered to be, right? So you got trophy children, trophy wife, trophy husband. And that's where this idea of mine, this is mine so I can control it. And what do we end up doing with it? Just sitting it down somewhere. Mind for what towards what? Hmm. We, we advocate or we teach, or, and, and I'm a big proponent of it. No one belongs to no one. Now, I don't mean that people aren't married. I don't mean people aren't related. I'm saying ultimately, mm -hmm. ultimately, this woman's body part is hers. Mm -hmm. Belongs to her. It don't belong to me. People say, what do you mean? It doesn't belong to me. If this woman, if, if I get with a woman, she's been with men before me. So it can't be mine. I always laugh with people. As people say, I love you. I say, well, how many times have I said I love you to another woman? How many times have you said I love you to another man? So we need to redefine it because you said I love you so many times in life to people, right? If you've said it, right? Mm -hmm. or, or even if it's one person, another man, another woman, you've said it. Mm -hmm. So were you lying then or are you lying now? Mm -hmm. Or does your love shift? Mm -hmm. And when, you know, is love fluid, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I love my first. <laughs> I remember, you know, Liana. And I'm buying, I'm a little kid, teenager, like 12, not even 12, probably nine, 10 years old. I thought I was in love. Yeah. I wrote a little card. Dear Liana, do you love me? Check the box. And she sent it back. Hell no. Right? No, but she checked the box. Right? <laughs> and she gave it back to me. Mm -hmm. And I was in love. I remember being in high school and I'm, I'm holding hands and we on the train station. We playing grown, right? We holding hands. And... But what was that love? No. To me, it was. If you had asked me at that point, I was, that was love, man. I'm, I was ready to die for her. <laughs> catch a grenade. Okay. okay. Right? Mm -hmm. or, or catch a body, you know, kill somebody for her. And then how many other times did I find this love? Mm -hmm. I was in college. I had love. There was Vernon. There was another person. There's love and, and love. And, and, and I had to realize that I do love, but do I know how to love? Mm -hmm. Do I know how to be loved? Do I know what love is by my culture? I can't take on love by the dominant culture. The dominant culture's idea of love is sex. Mm -hmm. Idea of love is control. Mm -hmm. The European idea of love is not the same. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's missing something. She, mm -hmm. they, and them are missing something. You don't do to the world what they've done to the world and have love in you. Hmm. A loving people cannot go around the world and massacre everybody. That's true. A people who know what love is cannot go around the world and take all animals to extinctions. The people who know how to love cannot go around the world and eliminate languages. The people who know how to love, we're asking a person who's shown at every turn that he has no idea what love is, mm -hmm. nor will ever, right, for that matter, and mm -hmm. we're following after them. So the idea of someone belonging to someone, I'm not saying no respect in relationships. That's not what I mean. What I'm saying is the way we've bought into the dominant culture's idea of love, mm -hmm. you've got to change that. And, we've, and this is uh, the great Baba, his name is uh, Amos Wilson. He talks about that, 
right? Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing that at some point over probably June, July, uh, doing another pieces of the puzzle, but this time on love and relationships and spending probably, you know, five, six months every yeah. Saturday, you know, mm -hmm. going through his reads and certain other reads to kind of understand this idea of love that we have is warped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you love me, you'll do this for me. Mm -hmm. If you love me, you will respect me. But my res my definition of respect is this. Mm -hmm. If you love me, and it's always if you love me. So now the person, if they don't do it, then they're saying they don't love they you. They don't love you. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of, that's a setup, right? If if you love, it's like a child. Dad, if you love me, you'll buy me this toy. So if I don't buy you the toy, then I don't love you. That's a setup. <laughs> you, you understand? Yes. So, so we, what should we, love be based on then? I mean, what makes the divine love briefly, and then we'll move to the next question. What makes well, it divine, divine? divine love has to have the divinity included. Mm. Divine love has to have creator, has to have ancestors, mm -hmm. has to have angels, guardian angels, has mm -hmm. to have the babies and the babas, mm -hmm. has to have the, because they were love. Mm -hmm. I know Martin Luther King loved me, because mm -hmm. he was willing to get killed so I could have a better condition. I know Baba Elijah Muhammad loved me. I know B.B. Clara Muhammad loved me because they were willing to be hated and talked about to make a better condition for their people. I know B.B. Weenie Mandela and Baba Nelson Mandela loves me because they were willing to lose their life and go to prison in her case for 11 years and in his case for 27 years for the people of South Africa, black people to have a better condition. That person I know without any doubt, unequivocally, they love me. Mm -hmm. So we want divine love. We need to have selflessness, self-sacrificing. Mm -hmm. You understand? Purpose. Mm -hmm. You have a purpose-driven life, then it has to have purpose-driven purpose love. Mm -hmm. Purpose-driven love are two or more people who are in love, and mm -hmm. their love, the glue, is the purpose. Mm -hmm. At that person's purpose, not the no, not the individual. Okay, the ultimate goal, mm -hmm. and that can be, and I, I don't just mean between a woman and a man. It could be the, a, a mother, father, and their children. Mm -hmm. What is this family's ultimate goal? Mm -hmm. What is this family's ethos? How do they plan on getting there, and how do they plan on tending it from them to the children, to the grandchildren, and so forth, to create legacy, to create mm -hmm. empires and nations, tribes, and things of that nature. Okay. That's the type of love that we need. Mm -hmm. Divine love, if it's not involved in love, that love won't last. Mm -hmm. if you take away divinity from it. I don't care you want to call yourself atheist, whatever. If there's not some higher purpose, mm -hmm. that love won't last because it's a hormone. And mm -hmm. what creates the hormone is the newness. Mm -hmm. You, you follow when you first mm -hmm. get with a guy or a girl, there's a newness, mm -hmm. right? So how do I keep that newness happening? I've got to infuse newness, right? New, new things to do, not new places to go only. Because right. everybody thinks newness. Like, let's go to the museum. Let's go yeah. roller skate. Yeah. Let's go smoke weed. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's not the newness. The newness is new purpose within mm -hmm. your purpose. You know, I, I say to people all the time: liberation is a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So liberation gives a family purpose. Because mm. once we've liberated from financial, now we got to liberate uh, towards business. Once mm -hmm. we liberated to have our own business, now we got to liberate towards music. Now we mm -hmm. need studio. Now we need little leagues. We need our own soccer league. We need our own mm -hmm. basketball, baseball, softball track. Okay, now that we've done that, we need our own housing. Now, mm -hmm. And so that couple is constantly, they jump, it's boom, next thing, next thing. And mm -hmm. so if you have that next thing, it's easy to stay in love. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's easy to stay in love with a person when you have the next goal. Mm -hmm. But when you eliminate the goals and we go into the illusionary state of love, mom, dad, we're going to get a house, we're going to get married, we're going to do two car, two car garage in America, two car mm -hmm. garage, we're going to go here, we're going to go see these things, we're going on vacation to Hawaii, da 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 da. da. Once you hit all of these vacation spots, imagine, <laughs> right? There's people by the time they're age 25 have been all over the world. Mm -hmm. That's what, like, what else, right. You, you, like, you, you kind of mm -hmm. kill the. We've got years ago, people got married, mm -hmm. worked, put their children through school. Mm -hmm. Once the children went off to college, now and graduated, now mom and dad would retire. They would rent or buy a Winnebago, those big RVs, or they get their passports, and now they can go see the world Travel. and mm -hmm. travel. 
and vacate and learn and see all the things together. But YOLO, YOLO, YOLO. Oh yeah, YOLO, you only live once. So now we instead go, man, I got to bungee jump off of Mount such and such. I got to go to Mount Everest. I got to do this. Yeah. I got to do that. And by the time we meet each other, now mm -hmm. there's nothing we can really do together. Mm -hmm. I've eaten at every restaurant. Uh, not not literally. I'm not mean, right? Because right. Think, right. Guys, you know, right? Mm -hmm. But most people, I've eaten every type of food. Mm -hmm. You want to have Mexican? No, I don't. I have Mexican. You want Indian? No, I've had Indian before. You want African? No, I've had African. You want Japanese? No, I've had Japanese. You want, well, hell, how you gonna how you gonna bond right. when the things food causes a bond, music causes a bond, dance causes a bond. If we if we burnt out the receptors, music is a chemical react. Or, or the reaction to music is chemical. Mm. So we've got to create a new system. I'm not saying it's hopeless. There's, there's a reality, the love, lies, liberation reality, the holy cryptic church, our way of life, our scriptures. Mm -hmm. It gives us the reality. It gives us the way out. Okay. I'm going to jump around real quick. This is not going to be one straight course because then I won't get the questions to ask. You just said bond. So I want to wrap up this bonding segment with, okay, if you have some, if a person jumps from relationship to relationship, right? Very short term, no long term relationships. Does that affect their ability to bond? Yes. How so, please? Um, well, again, when I say relationships, I'm talking the sex. Yes, the sex. I, every time, uh, every, it's, and, and I told sisters this, I told women this, and you know, it's not a gender thing, but this portion does specifically speak to the gender. When a woman copulates with a man, she's taking on his DNA for life. For life. For life. Now, can yeah. she quarantine it once she understands how his DNA is now affecting hers? Yes. But it is a bond. There's, it, it, there's no way. When a man lays with a woman, there's a spiritual exchange of energy. That spiritual or sacred exchange of energy, he's carrying a portion of her personality, her spiritos, for life. Mm -hmm. For life. Mm. And has to recognize it in his own character so he can quarantine it. Okay. A woman carries a child, right? Nine mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. Her body, in the, through the umbilical cord, takes on the blood of that baby through the father because the man's blood type, the, that's the blood type of the child. Her blood takes on through the umbilical cord. Her body absorbs it. She now has his DNA mm -hmm. for life. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, yeah. all is not lost. I want people like, oh, my God, forget yeah. it. No. Right? The bet. key is once you know that, mm -hmm. now what was his or her character? What was his or her behavior? Let me log that. I'm, you don't got to put it on a big poster, but you just got to log it so that when you see it acting up in yourself, you say, that's Ricky. That's Suzanne. The problem is when you didn't know Ricky, how are you going to log it? That's okay, well, then, that, okay, well, I, I, that's but a different anyway, kind of person, so. right? If the person didn't, it was a one night stand, right? A quick mm -hmm. relationship. They never got to know Ricky. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you got to know yourself. Mm. What were you like before Ricky? Mm. That mm. one night stand, Ricky or Suzette, right, for the man. What was I like before I slept with Suzette? And how have I changed since then? If we're willing to confront that reality, because, again, we, you know, we live in this world of illusion where people don't want to confront their reality. I'm a good person. Yes. So I've taken a shower and I'm I've good. washed it off of me and I'm good. And if only it were that simple, but it's not. So it, it, people, when we say, I, I say this to people all the time, you got to choose a path. Mm. You can't go through life without some type of spiritual, social, fraternal mm. relationships. Okay, you're an atheist, then join the Lodge, join the Rastacrucians, join the Astarta. Join the NAACP. Join the political, the National Action Network. Join something political. I'm a free you're... spirit, Dr. Rama. I'm a free spirit. And right. I believe that, you know, it. you don't need to be affixed to a religion. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I didn't I'm say religion. I said uh, something, anything. Political organization, civic organization. Because if you don't, then yeah, you'll be a free spirit. You know what happens to free spirits? <laughs> what, happens what happens to the free gazelle? Mm, they get you know that gazelle when you see all the gazelles eating together and there's this one free spirit gazelle that sees the tall grass 
And they, they, you see it, you just turn on National Geographic and they're free spirit. Turn on uh, uh, Netflix and go and watch the free spirit fish mm. is the one that sees the hook. And he's a free spirit. They got food down there. But this free spirit fish says, I want that thing that's on that hook. Mm. This free spirit gazelle wants the tall grass and doesn't realize that thing that keeps blinking inside the tall grass is the lion. Mm. The free spirit. Every creature who survives moves with their pack, moves with their pride, moves with their herd, moves as a collective. Mm -hmm. So the free spirit people, I tell them, hey, you know, live YOLO. You only live once. You only die once, too, but YOLO, right? <laughs> live your life. Okay. And when you get tired of the pain and the stress, come mm -hmm. see me. But until then, YOLO it up. I, I say this to people all the time. I say, look, go live your life. Make mm. make more mistakes. Live when you finish. Come back. Come see me. Mm. I'll I'll meet you further down the road called life. Mm. And that's whether it's in relationships or anything. I've always been that person. That's the way I was raised. If I'm talking to a young lady, I say, "You're not listening." You were, okay? Go make the mistake. Go get that mistake out of you. Go burn it out. Mm. If you make it back, we'll have a different conversation. Mm. That, and and and, and, and I, I don't just mean in a relationship with me. I'm talking about from doctrinal. Right. Man, woman, I've, talk, I've mentored, talked to young men in their 20s and 30s, and, and I say to them, you're doing it wrong. No, but by sex, you don't understand. Okay, what, what don't I understand? Mm -hmm. Well, because I feel, and I say, okay, that's you, you're telling me how you feel, but tell me about what you understand. Mm -hmm. You're telling me your feelings. We all got them. We all got feelings. Mm -hmm. We all got opinions. We all got a, my nose different than your nose. I mean, the picture behind you, they got a different nose. Picture behind me, got a different nose. That's yeah. what feelings are like. That's, feelings are like opinions. Opinions are like your nose. Mm -hmm. Everybody got one, but they're all different. Mm -hmm. How do we get this thing to get ourselves back as a people towards liberation? We got, we got to just, you know, got to make some changes. Okay. Happen. okay. They say first impressions is lasting impressions, right? And um, I know you have even a dating. Um, app or a dating system called first impressions. So how important is first impressions? Because they say you can't turn a wife, what they say, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife, but then you can. Some people I see- Turn a nigga meet, into a wife too, a husband either, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I see people meet, you know, people who, you know, strippers, different things, but then they can make them into a wife. And so I've seen it done both ways. So how important- You've seen, you've seen somebody turn a stripper into a wife or you've seen somebody marry a stripper? Marry a stripper. That's the difference. What do you mean? Okay, uh, okay. If a woman marries a male stripper, or a man marries a female stripper, or mm -hmm. a prostitute, or whatever, legally, yes, that's a husband or wife on paper. But mm -hmm. their behavior, okay, their tendencies, mm -hmm. okay, their their taste, mm -hmm. the things they want to do, you can't change that. That person has to have something, whether it's psychological, right? They got to sit down with a therapist and get deep down in the back of the brain and figure out why they had these behaviors. If they don't do that, or they got to join some type of, again, civic or religious organization, whatever, something that steers them in a different direction. If not, this is why people often says, I don't know why I keep attracting the same type of woman. You know, the idea people say, do you have a type? Everybody has a type. And that's true. But mm. not the way they make it. Some people think it's a type like a look. But it's not really a look. It's a mentality. Mm. Right? And people of a certain mentality tend to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right? Mm -hmm. So we got to first determine what the mentality is. But you can't, you can't, you and I can't take a hooker or prostitute, male or female stripper, and make them into a spouse. A higher purpose can do that, yes. Okay. But you got to make sure that they got that higher purpose. But the image of it, right? I'm, I'm speaking about the image of it. Can you mm -hmm. take the image of seeing her or him in whatever state that was and not, you know? Oh, hell no. Hell no. No. Hell no. Heaven, heaven, no. Heaven, no. Right? No, why not? No. First impressions. If you see a person, the way you meet a person, the way you meet that person, that's how you're going to perceive them. First impressions forever? is often a Well, I don't mean, okay, let me say, when you say forever, can you see their growth? Yes. Mm -hmm. But in their growth, growth with a TH, right? Um, New York says with an F, right? <laughs> if you see their growth, mm -hmm. um, 
and they make a mistake with all of the memory of their before they grew, will that come back to you? Yeah. Right? If I was a street runner and I've now settled down five years, six years, I ain't done nothing, and now I go back to run, oh, you back to your old tricks again. Mm. You're gonna remember. So the key is we, we teach Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Mm -hmm. Being able to identify the good side, the balanced side of me, and the Mr. Hyde. And how do I control Mr. Hyde? To mm -hmm. only have him show his or her face when necessary under the right conditions to help or to aid, you know, in what we're trying to do. Other than that, no, you're going to see if you meet a person in respect, you'll tend to always respect them. If you meet a person in a disrespect, you can, you, you, you'll you see them in that way. That's, That's almost like saying once a cheater, always a cheater. You know what I'm saying? And it's like Yeah, once no, it, but, but in fact, once a cheater, the person is always going to suspect you of cheating. That's the truth. When you commit a crime and you come out of jail and you say, I've been, I don't commit crimes no more. The society said, oh, wait, look, she says she don't, you know, he, he ain't killing nobody no more. <laughs> no, it's on your record. Yeah, it's on, it's yeah. on your record. Mm -hmm. You can try to get it expunged. But if you do anything, they're always going to go back to your record. When we thought like that as a people, we were mm -hmm. mindful so we didn't create problems. But we don't eliminate mindfulness. We mm -hmm. come from a generation with the Internet and rewind buttons on DVRs and, and you can DVR it or you can fire stick it or you can, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So because of that, we keep thinking I can do all the YOLO in my life. And then like Cinderella, the fairy godmother comes and bing, and they're going to tap me. And all that I've done is suddenly forgiven, forgotten, and it's gone away. Mm -hmm. And Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm mm -hmm. saved. That mm -hmm. sounds wonderful mm -hmm. in theory. Okay. Right. But in reality, my past is here. Hmm. Whether I choose to allow that past to influence my present, that is a choice. Mm -hmm. My present will affect my future, whether in a balanced way, whether in a beneficial way, that is a choice. But okay. it will affect this future. You can't escape that. Now, in politics, they know that. That's why they vet the candidates. Mm -hmm. They dig into your life. Sports, before they sign this $40 million a year contract, they got private investigators that go and look into the athlete's life. Mm -hmm. Who they are, their mama is, who their daddy is, who got arrested in their family. They want to know everything because it's an investment in this person. And this person is going to become the face of your party, the face of your, your business, the face of you know, the, 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 what they call the, uh, the sponsor or the, the advertiser, right? Or it's another word, right? This person becomes the spokesperson for mm -hmm. your business, et cetera. They vet you. Why? Because they can't afford to take a person who's a pedophile, like the, the Jared with Subway. Subway lost millions because they had this guy, Jared, as their spokesperson, and he was a pedophile and on the computer, child pornography. And when it came out, Subway was like, you got to be kidding me. We got the freaking pedophile sitting with the kids in the commercial. It was horrible. Their stock plunged. Mm. Mm -hmm. And they said, we got to do better. We vetted him, but we, we should have dug deeper. Mm. That's the same thing in relationships. It's the mm. same thing in organizations. People sometimes act, if I say certain things, they, and I go, wait a minute, you grew up in the world, right? The same Western societies I grew up in. I know you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The difference is, like as I said in the beginning uh, of this interview, is that we do it for everything else. But when it comes to the most important thing, mm -hmm. I'm going to create a new life form with this woman, with this man. Hmm. And I'm going to lay with them, exchange, chemically bond, create a child. And this child is going to carry, even if you don't believe the man and woman is going to carry your DNA, that child is going to carry the mother or father's DNA for the rest of their life. And we take that as such an insignificant act. That's true. Mm -hmm. And then the poor little kids walking around bumping their head in the wall and, and doing silly weird stuff at age 35 and you mm -hmm. can't figure out why this 35 year old hasn't grown No, this is real talk. It's true. Right? Yeah. Hasn't grown up because we are failing. We had a science called principled eugenics. Mm -hmm. Not Hitler eugenics principled eugenics mm. that said we must, like every other creature in nature, form bonds, not just male, female, but families, business, trade. I don't want to go into business with nobody who's not mentally fit. Mm. 
who doesn't understand the basis of who doesn't know 12 times 12. Mm. Right? If you're gonna be my business partner, I'm gonna write a bunch of math and say, <laughs> solve that. No, real talk. Yes. Just a bunch of math, just basic math, multiplication, some division, mm -hmm. some square root, some some quadratic equation, little, you know what I'm saying? Some some basic math. That's basic. I'm not gonna give you quantum physics, but here you go, solve that. Well, I don't know how to do that. Good, because that's the formula. That's the formula for trade. If you don't know that formula and we're in the trade business, we're going to have problems. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying don't sound weird because jobs do the same. When you go for an interview, mm -hmm. they ask you questions. They want to see your resume or your CV. Mm -hmm. After they see these things, they bring you in for a second interview. Then they walk you through. Then they stick you in front of the computer. They mm -hmm. give you a scenario to see if you can solve it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? Okay, sorry. I just got to cut you short. I'm looking at the time. I got a couple more questions and I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions briefly, if you don't mind. Yes. So I don't want to cut you off quickly. Okay. So Love Lies Liberation, you spoke about body count. Does body count matter? All of that good stuff. However, some people don't want to extend their body count and at the same time, they still want pleasure. Now we're talking natural sexual in the sense of natural sexual union, love, lies, liberation book, right? So when it comes to masturbation, you express with the male. Oh, yeah, you, got, you got to prep people. You just <laughs> oh. it out there. I, I was not ready. I was like, okay, <laughs> love, lies, liberation, masturbation. Whoa. <laughs> okay, go. That's funny. I thought it was going to make me choke. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Whoa. Whoa. I didn't see that one coming. Did not see that coming. Right. Go ahead. Okay. So masturbation right so with the male you say he's given up his life for us yes and then i think it's a little bit of a confusion when it comes to females so can you please express because there was questions asked to you in year one and i'm asking again now so we can get a little bit clarity on what is the position of a woman who does not want to extend her body count but she still wants to please herself, no sex toys involved, what does the men priesthood say? Men priesthood teaches us, here's the reality, regardless of, number one, regardless of what I say, people are going to do what they want to do, okay. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't like to put any guilt in nobody's situation, right? Not in there, but I can't believe I just pleased myself, right? Raw, right? Raw to... and un unfiltered. Right. Today. So, okay. so I, don't, I don't want to do that to people, right? Mm -hmm. But if we're talking on a chemical level, male or female, mm -hmm. a person who's masturbating because they're alone, mm -hmm. the more they do it, the more they're deadening their body's ability to bond later on. I'm only talking biologically speaking. If that person never plans to be with nobody else again, knock yourself out, you know what I'm saying? Go for your thing. Mm -hmm. But if that person has any intent to later on be with someone in life, then they've got to start asking themselves, what is triggering me to want? Because there's people, and I've, and I've mentored or counseled men and women mm -hmm. who've said, man, I've got to masturbate five, six times a day. I'm at my job. I got to go to the, to the, to the uh, hmm. what's it called? The, the bathroom, yeah. the restroom. Mm -hmm. No, real talk, right? Real, real conversation. And the first thing is, what's causing your body to want that chemical release? Because it's, it's it's a chemical. It's a chemical. And it's not just testosterone or estrogen. Mm -hmm. It's a chemical. That chemical is being triggered by something in the environment mm -hmm. or something in the mind, in the mindset. Whether it's clothing, the scent, the music, the television, the frequencies, whatever the case may be, something's triggering this person to have this reaction. When a person begins to study, and this is the how important knowing what racism white supremacy is mm -hmm. right if i understand racism white supremacy if i understand slavery there were people who were breeders during slavery mm -hmm. some of us come from those families right i'll say it is us so no one's shamed because i don't come from that perspective of shame mm -hmm. they were they were people on breeding farms whose only job was to have sex get pregnant or impregnating. There were men who were moved from farm to farm to farm to farm, whose only job was to impregnate. They brought him in tonight. He'll be here for a week. They studied him out like you do any animal. This is how our people were being treated. Mm 
So this person, if you come from that line and you don't know it and have not been able to address the genetic predisposition, the curse, mm -hmm. and how to first recognize it, right? Because if we don't, most people don't have this conversation. Mm -hmm. If we can have the conversation, then we can say, okay, so this is something that is a result of a condition. How do I change that and recondition the mind? So it can't just be a result of you wanting to be... Okay, like a, a man has... Okay, let me say it a right? different way. Before slavery, we wasn't running around our villages masturbating all day. Because we had... No, no, what was <laughs> no. that? Okay. Because you had a culture that mm -hmm. kept your mind occupied with other things. We mm -hmm. weren't sex... Today, sex is everywhere. Right, mm -hmm. you turn on the TV, sex. You go to buy in England, they got it on TV, right? Regular TV, right? The sex is everywhere. Sex to sell this, sex to sell that, sex, mm -hmm. sex, 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 sex. So it's become a hypersexual culture, yeah, or society yeah. where we can't even imagine. We can't even imagine saying, "I'm not going to have sex for a year." That's what, what I was going to ask. How long should okay. a man or woman be able to go without again? Having it's not about how long. It's mm -hmm. about changing the culture. Okay. If mm -hmm. we change how we, uh, uh, I say this to people because sometimes, you know, and I'm not talking from a position of I've made it and I was never there. No, I was where everybody else was at some point in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But someone had to teach me to look at the world a little bit different. Mm. And in teaching me how to look at the world different, my approach became different. Just the approach. Doesn't mean I don't like women. Doesn't mean, no, that's not what I'm talking about. It means how I, I understand what this act is. I understand what the result is, not just children. I understand this exchange of energy. I feel the energy. I sense the energy. I know what the energy is. I know how to use it or not be used by it. Mm -hmm. When you do that, then sex has a different approach. In our ancient cultures, sex was sacred. Mm hmm you know, today, if a woman takes off her shirt, a, a beautiful woman, and she gets on the bus and takes her breast out, and the nipple shows to feed the baby, all the men are like, Ugh. <laughs> But you can travel around the world to places in Africa, and, 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 and a woman is feeding her baby whilst, and I'm buying goods from her, and there's no thought of sex. Hmm. But because of Bo Derek, Brooke Shields, that's in America, and I don't know whoever the sexy, you know, mm -hmm. breast lady was in England, right? But every wh white culture has breasts on TV. We now can't see that. We've been corrupted. Is that part of poison? Mm -hmm. That's part of poison. We mm -hmm. call it the delicacy of the harlot. So it's changed how we look. I'm, I'm Again, my job is always to first introduce a different thought and then say to people, now challenge the thought. But to challenge mm -hmm. the thought, you got to first determine what you think hmm. and is what you think found is it founded on a stable ground because mm -hmm. most times people will question me and mm -hmm. i say well the thing you're questioning me from is it stable can mm -hmm. i for every question you ask me can i ask you one mm -hmm. and then you and then that person's oh. their foundation crumbles mm -hmm. when we're talking masturbation etc which i talk about in the book i'm not telling people if you're single you can't do this i'm saying the amount of times that this man or woman, whether it's sex, toys, or blow up dolls, or whatever it is that people do, I don't, I'm not nobody's bearer, nor do I want to be. It. Lord mm -hmm. knows, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, you need to find out where the behavior is coming from. That's slavery. Now, let's bring it away from slavery. What about if I was a child exposed to, por exposed to pornography very young? Mm hmm. Like mm -hmm. Richard Pryor, his mother was a prostitute, grandmother ran a brothel. James Brown, mother was, was ran a brothel. So there was men who grew up in conditions where prostitution, they were, can you imagine being a one, two, three, four-year-old growing up in a brothel, seeing men go in room with your mama, your aunties, your grandmama, and, and them, right? Mm -hmm. What does that do to that man's psyche towards women? Mm -hmm. What does that do to that girl's psyche towards men? It has an effect. We are a people that has been broken through this system Right. And, and doing whatever people have to do to survive. Those things have to be addressed. Mm -hmm. If we begin to address those things in real conversation with the people we love, care about, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Now we can change our behavior. Mm -hmm. Behavioral changes happen when we can change the environment and mm -hmm. our perception of it. We, mm -hmm. you know, we have universal laws we teach from our scriptures. These universal laws say change your relativity, 
change your perception, change your uh, uh, the, the universal law of of of, of perception. You know, mm-hmm. uni- these universal laws. If we change how we look at things, then those behaviors. It's like a person who smokes. Why do they smoke? Mm-hmm. What do they have to do? How come there's people who've been able to quit smoking? They mm-hmm. had to change how they looked at the. Cigarette. Was that is that more so? It's hard for people who have the the sex spirit force, right? That you speak about in the book. What is 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 that really what's well, taking place? Sex spirit force blinds you to blinds you from anything other than sex. Hmm. You understand? We, we we would say scripturally, it blinds selfish and ignoble men from higher purpose. Hmm. So that's what when we okay. So it's not that the sex spirit force, like oh my god, is on my back. The monkey's on my back. Can't shake it. No, not that type of thing. Mm-hmm. The sex spirit force makes you blind to anything else. Okay. So I can only see this woman for sex. I can mm-hmm. only see this man for ultimately. Sex. For sex, right? If, if, if a woman said, well, the only thing you can really do for me is sex. You can't do nothing for me that I can't do for myself. The only thing the mo- that means she's only seeing him or men mm-hmm. from sex. If mm-hmm. a man says the same thing, what racism, mm-hmm. white supremacy has done when they took the sacredness out of sex mm-hmm. and then made everything about sex and mm-hmm. then said sex sells. And then without telling us what does it sell, sex sells everything. Mm-hmm. And if sex is selling everything, then what are we selling our souls for? Mm. Ultimately, for pleasure. People want to get money to do what? Why people want to be rich? Mm-hmm. Because Ultimately, to have fun. Well, mm-hmm. we're in that fun, sex is there. Mm. In yeah. that fun, it's there. That's true. Right? Women will say, well, men can do it. Why can't we do it? I, I smile mm. and say, you can Go for it. <laughs> yeah. no, no, the truth. You can. Women can sleep around, do everything, go for it. Go for but it. <laughs> what are the results going to be? Well, that you, yes, there's yes. a burden. Sex can be a burden for a man. Sex can be a burden for a woman. Sex okay. can be a burden for people. Mm-hmm. Sex blinds you from higher purpose. Not that you sit and have sex, but what is the purpose when you bring this child forth? What's the purpose? Mm-hmm. If no child is conceived, what's the purpose? Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Two more questions. And then I'll ask the audience if you have any questions for Dr. Varma very briefly, we'll um, ask a couple because it's getting late and I'm looking at the time. So you can start putting your questions in the chat room. Um, I have something that we're going to do. We're normally going to introduce this into the podcast where we add is the wild card, the wild card question. I don't think it's too wild, but you spoke about in year two of Love, Lies, Liberation, you gave a chart and um, on that chart, you showed the, the different zones of the vagina and of the penis, et cetera, et cetera, right? And how it can be used to heal, how it can be used to heal that person. So does it take a certain shaped uterus or a certain type of penis to produce the energy or to accomplish whatever goal that that person is set out to do because it seems like for it to reach a certain zone or to heal a person or to create a certain energy, it has to have a certain mixing of two people, the shape, the size, the, all of those things that come into play. Well, first and foremost, let's bear in mind, originally mm-hmm. you only married within your tribe and family. Okay. So everybody was genetically built similar. Mm-hmm. Right. If, if you were Afar, the Afar men all look a certain way. Mm-hmm. If you were Hosa, the Hosa women all look a certain way uh, of Nigeria um, or the Hosa of South Africa. If you mm-hmm. were um, Hendendawa, Cherokee, Chukta, whatever, whatever your tribe. So your tribe your, was, was not just the name that you, that you identified with, but it was the actual features, this cranial structure, nose, lips, eyes, hands, dress code, foods mm-hmm. you ate. So the naturalness of those unions were easy. Now we live in a day and time where everybody, we done mixed up, you know, tribes all over the place. The world has changed. But in that, the answer, yes. In the book, I describe three basic, but there's, of course, anomalies in between. Mm -hmm. Sizes of a penis, sizes of a vagina, three different sizes. Mm -hmm. Um, And based off those sizes and positioning. It has nothing just to just do with just the size, but this particular size in this particular position, right. knowing is it an ascending uterus, a descending uterus? Is it prolapsed uterus? Is it an inverted uterus? You know, the, the womb. Based off of that, and, and it's simple ways to find out, and I talk about it in the book. Mm-hmm. 
You're still on mute. Sorry. Mm. No? Okay. Continue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Someone can put it in the chat. Is it muted for you as well? Because I have no sound. Yes, you are muted. It's your sound. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're back. Um, what we're saying is, so it, it, knowing what the uterus or what the penis, the shape, the head, circumcise mm -hmm. on the reason, why did we circumcise? Why did we mm -hmm. do a certain type? Yeah, all of these are important. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. These are discussions, couples, and we, families had this before. We didn't have, you, you just went and got married. All of these were things that had to be discussed so that we would know, you know, some men have a, uh, uh, where they have one one of their testicles hasn't has not descended. Grown men, yeah, and it affects their ability to impregnate. The surgeries that can be gotten to to repair it, but no one wants to have those conversations. I've watched couples struggle with fertility because of simple surgeries. But you know, as a man, you know, uh, simple for me because I don't have to have it, right? Mm -hmm. But if you had to have it, you're like, ooh, ooh, I don't think I want to go have this surgery. It creates problems. Okay, you understand. So mm -hmm. real conversation, real So you have reality. to study the anatomy, the anatomy you and you have that. to understand what you can do for that female or that male based on both of your anatomies together. And you, well, no, first and foremost, you have to understand or understand who you are as a being. What is your mm -hmm. culture? What is your belief? What is your goal? What, okay. what are you first? You got to first know thyself. Everything else is secondary. Mm -hmm. If I don't know who I am, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how I want to get there. I don't know what I'm willing to do, how it should be. If I don't have that guidance, mm -hmm. everything else is going to fail. You okay. got to know yourself. Be true to yourself. Then by the time you get to with someone, they got to know themselves, be true to themselves. And then if the two of you can decide to choose a simple, a, 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 a predetermined or similar path, mm -hmm. then that path will move you. You know, what we teach as Nazarites at the Holy Coptic Church uh, or Atonis Carestians as Nazarenes, it guides us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? It, you don't hear pastors have this type of conversation, whether it's on sex, business, trade, they just right. don't. It's they more don't. praise God, praise God, praise God, and no one's addressing the reality. Mm -hmm. We have to have another type of conversation, another type of directive. That's where your spirituality, your way of life, your belief system comes from. Without it, okay. it's just not going to happen. All right. And this is it for me. And then we'll see if anyone put any questions in the chat. So if out of everything that took place during Love Lives Liberation, the women's conference, if you had to say one thing to the female, one thing to the male in the context of stop your ish, I'm not going to say the word because I'm a Nazarite lady. I won't say that, but stop your ish. What have we not addressed? What do we need to look at that is very, very important to just evaluate and to change so that we can progress? We, well, I think we got to admit we're angry. Mm. We have to admit we're angry. We have to admit we're broken. Nobody comes out of this system of oppression and doesn't get broken. I don't care how well you speak, how articulate you are, how many masters and PhDs you have. We have been broken. Slavery by design, in order to make a person a slave, you have to break them. In order to make anybody a slave, you have to break them. So because we've all been a product of this in condition called chattel slavery, Arab slavery, Chinese slavery, Japanese enslavement, Aryan Indian enslavement, all of us have, have tasted of this thing called slavery. And you cannot be a slave, willing or unwilling, if you've not been broken. So we've all been broken. Accept that. In our brokenness, when we realize it, our first reaction is we are angry. I've got to admit, Amadou, yes, AJ, mm -hmm. you, doctor, yeah, well, all these titles, wonderful. You're angry. Now, what are you angry at? Mm -hmm. 
I'm angry of what has happened to me and why my life has had to go through these pains. I'm angry. Good. Who are you angry at? This system. Good. Don't take it out on her. Don't take it out on them. Admit your anger to yourself and to others. These are the things that piss me off about this system. I don't want to take this out on you. Let me let you know what it is and let's work together to take it to the person who deserves it. I always say to people in relationships, you know, when you mentor couples, I'll say to the man or woman, you know, well, who did this to you? Who pissed you off? Let's go find them with two baseball bats and let's wear them out. Because if not, you're going to suffer or we're going to suffer with misplaced anger. So I'll say to every man and every woman, stop suffering from misplaced anger by first admitting that you're angry that you're hurt. And it doesn't mean this man or woman did it to you, but somewhere along the line, we got broken. And in our brokenness, where they say hurt people, hurt people. So if we're hurting each other, it's because we are broken. If we're hurting each other, it's because we're not dealing with the reality. We've got to get back to dealing with reality. Now I'm not hearing you, you're muted. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Thank you, Dr. Varma. Okay, so we have two questions and I'll let you go. I know it's late where you are and I really appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. um, we have Emmanuel Dorset in the chat. Mm -hmm. He says, Earth, was that to balance things off as far as what we've been learning about sex? I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, when say, say, that, say, that, say that one more time, please. Earth, was that to balance things off as far as we've been learning about sex? I'm not sure. Maybe was there another, that at a point there a in the conversation. Right. There it is on the screen. Um, if you could bring that back up, please. I, I read it, but I'm just okay. saying maybe he may have typed something. Right. So if you can go into further detail. There you go. When the angelic host came down to have sex with women that were found fair, was that due to the fact that the fallen angelic beings had already raped and mixed in with some of the females here in earth? And was that uh, to balance? Okay. okay. Right. If, I, if I'm understanding, yeah. I think that's how the question, right. Mm -hmm. And was that to balance mm -hmm. things off as far as what we've been learning about sex? Right. Yes. Um, we, we're we living in a generation that we, we know we're not going to change uh, 8 billion people to start treating sex as sacred. It ain't going to happen um, because it's fun, right? It's pleasurable and you're not going to convince people to give up the pleasure, but you can have a conversation and you can convince those who are tired, right? Mm -hmm. Those who, who get it, right? Those of us listening tonight or who might hear this, this, this podcast, those who are tired, we want to make the changes. We want to okay. change our lives. This is what those angels back. If you, if you're a person of faith, a man or woman of faith, this is what those angels back in Genesis, this is what they were dealing with. They were addressing this idea that in order to shift the tide, see the people that are just treating sex as fun, mm -hmm. black, white, green, or blue, mm -hmm. they're going to die off. Mm. Because if you see the European, he can't have children. He's struggling. That's just genetics. His genes have reached the point of their expansion. It's going to die off. Extinction level, they are, they're talking about it now. But Black folks, when we take on their image and likeness and we start taking on their behaviors, mm -hmm. do we contract those diseases, the sex diseases that they have? Yes. Do those sexual diseases affect our reproductive abilities? Yes. That's one group of Black people. Mm -hmm. Another group of Black people that are following them, do we use birth control? Yes. And we might use the, uh, I don't want to say, I always, military say IUD, improvised explosive device, with IUD, right? Not the IED, right? The IUD, we get all these things that now tells our bodies not to get pregnant, morning after pills, all these other things. Then by the time we want to start having children, we struggle. Mm. That's another group of black people, right? Mm -hmm. we, 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 we have to recognize and, and not allow ourselves to remain or become. Yes. Then you have those who are uh, treating it just for pleasure and as much sex as they're having, the ones that are not on birth control or the men are not wearing condoms, mm -hmm. how are they not having a lot of children? How is that possible? 
Mm. All because their hormone levels are off. Mm. When the hormone levels are off through bad diet, because the people who are sleeping around randomly, they don't have the best of diets. Mm. Right? Because you are what you eat. You are what you listen to. You are who you sleep with. Mm-hmm. So if you're sleeping around with just any, as my mom used to say, Tom, Dick, and Harry, right? If you're mm-hmm. sleeping around with any random person, mm-hmm. then you are a mentality that eats bad. You're a mentality that listens to bad music. You're a men- mm-hmm. And if you do all of those, then the health factors are going to reflect that. And so what happens is that type of mentality, per the young man's question, is going to lead to the demise of certain people. Certain genes are going to die off. Mm-hmm. And the 24 elders, the Awalina, they're called in the book of uh, uh, Genesis, they understood this. We understand that today. We're focused on people who want to bring forth a better living, set up neighborhoods, develop lands, properties, mm-hmm. put neighborhoods there, and bring forth an, another type of ancient way of being, of thinking, so we can survive. Mm-hmm. You follow? So we can yeah. survive. If we're not reproducing, we will die off. We will die There's off. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know, That's I tell true. people, you got one child, two child, three child, four mm-hmm. child. But the more children you have, the better your survival rate. Now, do you want random children? No. So we've got right. to. Right, right. You know, Yes. And so I'm looking down just to read the um, the comments here. And so we have a question and it says, so it says, as a tonus, we teach that ladies should be wife, sister, daughter, friend to their spouse. And men should be husband, brother, son, friend to his spouse. So why do we focus so much on the wife, husband part? How do we achieve all other parts? OK, we never say friend. Right. I, I never I say mother, <laughs> daughter, sister, wife, yes. father, son, brother. Uh, yes. uh, Father, husband. Husband. father, mm-hmm. son, brother, husband. Mm-hmm. Never say friend because friend means fiend and fiend is your enemy. So we don't want friend, right? Um, so the last part of the question. So why do we focus on? Why do we focus so <laughs> much on wife, husband part? How do we achieve all other parts? Well, you start, okay. Well, first of all, you are, all of us are born son or daughter, mm-hmm. right? That we focus on that. That's where the parents come to play. At age 13, if we're in our ceremonies, you become a brother or sister. You have siblings, you have to take care of them. So we go mm-hmm. from daughter, son to become brother, sister. Okay. Then we go, so we have to learn how to be, and your parents teach you that. Treat your sister right, treat your brother right, don't talk to them like that, share, blah, blah, blah. Such. We move from child, son, daughter to brother, sister, then you get to an age where you begin to date or take interest in Mm -hmm. the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. When that happens, if things work out, you become husband, wife. That's where most people. And then if you have a child, you become mother, father. The reason it seems to be the focus, because that's often where we meet. I have to meet a young lady where she is. I have to meet her as husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the term people want to use today, spouse, Mm co-sign, consort, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I have to learn about them to see what type of sibling, what type of son were they. Right. Right. This man, how does he treat his mother? How does he feel about his mother? How does he feel about, does he be like, yeah, my mom, you know, sometimes she just be tripping. Mm. <laughs> or no, my mom was tough, but I love her. That's the, that's my heart. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's important. You're going to determine what type of son and what type of sibling this woman or man was. Because that's how they treat you. Well, yeah, because mm-hmm. the type of son or, or daughter, the type mm-hmm. of sibling that they were, when they become brother and sister to you is how they're going to treat you. Mm-hmm. If they were sibling rivalry, mm-hmm. when they were brother and sister to their personal siblings, mm-hmm. guess what they're going to be to you? Same thing. <laughs> the rivalry will continue because yeah. it's called misplaced energy. Mm-hmm. Where the energy was, energy cannot be lost nor destroyed. It is simply transferred from one body to the next. So if I meet a young lady and I see that she's having little issues with her dad, the first thing I'll say, no, no, talk to your father like that. Mm-hmm. It's your father. You should respect mm-hmm. him better. I don't care what you, the true. dynamics is. You got to respect your father. And the person that might say, because I understand that I'm going to be a father to her children one day. And if mm-hmm. I'm going to be a father to her children and she's being that way to her father, what she's going to be to me when I start parenting her child. 
Mm-hmm. When I now become the role of father, that energy is going to shift mm-hmm. because it can't be lost nor Not destroyed. destroyed. It's mm-hmm. got to be transferred. So if we know that from the beginning, we make those shifts. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. That's what I'll say to people: it's not about me not focusing on the other parts. The other right. parts are there, but the part that I'm meeting is boyfriend, girlfriend, right, mm-hmm. or husband, wife, or consort. You know, everybody got a term for it. Mm-hmm. But once we begin to have those conversations, if you see me treating my sister like crap as a man, I can't walk my sister Musu Elizabeth. I love that's my heart. Yeah. Right. I got, I got other yeah. oldest. I got another older sister rest with the ancestors, but uh, Fomenta, but Musu Elizabeth, she took care of me. She's only three years older than me, two and a half. Right. I'll say three, but she'll argue with me if she sees this. But she took care of me. She was a great big sister, and I don't just mean taking care of me. Great. She, I think she caught a couple of beatings for me. Right. <laughs> That's really great. Yes. <laughs> right. But really, you know, she took yeah. she took some she took some stuff on my behalf and mm-hmm. was always this type of sister. So if she calls me right now, say, I'm gonna do I got a situation, I, I'm there. Even if I can't fly there, whatever I got, she got. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's important. Yeah. Now I got a big brother, Tony. Mm-hmm. How I relate to him. That's my big brother. I love him. And we went through life together. Mm-hmm. You understand how I mm-hmm. feel about him is what allows me to be a good brother to any man. Like I'll say, Kahun Muntu Ta, that's my brother. He's more brother mm-hmm. than me than anybody. Mm-hmm. He's more sibling than me. To, and I don't mean offense to any of my siblings, but what he represents to me, how I feel about him. Right. But the reason I'm able to treat him that way is because of how I treated Tony. Mm-hmm. The reason I'm able to treat, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. my sister in a certain way is because mm-hmm. of how I treated Musa Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. The way I, the reason I'm able to be the type of father that I am or, or or that I strive to be each day because, you know, being a father or a parent is a, is a is never ending. Even when they're grown, they're not grown, even if they think they're grown. Right. But mm-hmm. it's because of the type of mother I had, whether the things that she showed me to do or the things that she showed me not to do. Mm-hmm. The mistakes she made, mm-hmm. I don't damn her for those mistakes. I just choose not to repeat them. The greatness that she did, I will repeat. And that's that's what it comes down to. Okay. Yes. Thank you. One more. We see we have hmm, a person. She's asking, is love language accurate? Chastity Hunt. Right. Well, I would say to the young lady, uh, or Sister Chastity, who's asking, is love language accurate if it's the Atonis love, lies, and liberation, which is based off the Cajun Papyrus out of ancient Nile River Valley culture, yes. Mm-hmm. But if you're talking about what the Europeans say, no. Mm-hmm. Baba, uh, 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 Henry Clark, John Henry Clark, Dr. Clark said, presume everything you've been taught has been a lie. So when they say love language, what they're saying and what we would say, do we have a love language? Yes. Our love language is based off of pictographs. When if I went, if, if, if you all uh, at home, if you go on your phone or your computer and you bring up the different symbols of love out of Africa, whether it's the Akan glyphs or the glyphs from the Zulu, the Iwe or the hieroglyphs, we yeah. had symbols for love. We had symbols for divine love, uh, male, female love, parenting love, uh, national love, tribal love. We had different symbols. Yes. But when you look at those symbols, those symbols were mathematical equations, formulas, and pictographs that told us in order to have this type of love, you need to move a certain way. Mm -hmm. So our love language was an actual language script that encoded how we treated each other. More more importantly, how we even felt about each other. Right? We said today in, in European system of love, I can love you without loving my mother. In the African system of love, I can't love you without loving my mother because I have to see my mother in you. European system says, I can't stand my father. You can't love me if you can't see love in your father because there's something in your father. He was the first man in a woman's life, bad or good, 
And whatever that man exhibited, something the beneficial has to be reflected in me. So just that alone takes you on two different paths. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and other cultures or races understood that. So love languages are accurate in the African system. And if we look at anyone else's system, let us dissect that system and not just accept it on face value. My teacher would always tell us, he said, be careful what you read in books because many fools write books for profit. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. the great Yana Van Zandt, when, when she, uh, the, when she, for years, she, she was on Oprah and her books were great books. And then she got to a point where she was no longer working with Oprah Winfrey, got mad at Oprah because she felt Oprah was holding her back. And then inevitably she came back and she was on Oprah's show and she was talking to uh, uh, Miss Winfrey. And uh, she said, you know, I remember you telling me to slow down. I remember you telling me that I wasn't ready and I thought you were holding me back and I want to tell the world that I apologize. She said, because, you know, though I was writing these books that were, you know, supposed to help people and help black love and about black love, she said, I wasn't living any of it. I was sleeping with different men almost every night. Mm. I was rich. I was partying. I was drinking. I was just partying. I was living my life and I was making money and I was standing in front of people every day telling them what they were reading in the book, but I was not living it. I'm saying that to say, so we got to be careful because there were people following that writing. Women who were holding, you know, their life. Stella got a groove back. What's the other young lady's name? Uh, Terry McMillan. I remember her books. She broke up a lot of relationships with her ideas only to find out she was with this uh, homosexual, right? I couldn't think of the word. (laughs) Yeah. Lip gloss and everything Mm -hmm. else. and, and when, when, when now when it came time for her to go, get what she was giving to men and women with her opinions, she didn't want no, she wanted privacy. Wendy Williams, right? When, when, when she would gig in everybody's life and talking crazy about everybody's relationships and everything else, it was okay. Now when she has her scandal, all of a sudden we don't want nobody yeah. to talk about it. Right. So we, we've got to be careful. I try, I do my best. And, and if I ever fail, I always say it won't be for lack of trying, but I do my best to try to live what I write, right? I do my best to say, I don't know every answer to everything. There's going to be something someone will ask me at some point that I'm going to go, that's a good question. I don't know. But that which I've learned, that which I give honor to the ancestors, to the great teachers, what they've written, I try to advocate. And try whatever influence I have on the Holy Coptic Church of the Black Messiah, right. try to use that influence to help people find a better way. Not that the only way, but a better way. Better way. And then if we can collectively put all that together, then mm-hmm. we'll have our way of life. And that's mm-hmm. the best we can do at this point. Yes. Okay, Dr. Varma, I see a question from Royal Breakthrough. It's totally up to you. You let me know if you would like to take the Some question. Some religions believe that once two people copulate, they are now considered married. What does marriage look like in the Atonis religion? Well, first of all, it's not about the religion. Originally, there was no marriage customs as far as you know, go to court and get a piece of paper, even in America and England. Right. When people say some religion in England, there was a time that was you know, England. I don't know if people realize, you know, 300 years ago, there was no place you went to to get married. You know what I'm saying? No culture had a actual place you went to and signed a document. In Europe. So 150 years ago, people got together and they were together. That's why they had a thing called common law marriage. That was the original marriage. There was no legal document. Then somebody figured, hey, we can make some money. You can, no, this is real talk. You can do research, right? You go to the town registry, you go and you register. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And they started registering. You got to pay a fee. And, and this was ways to make money and, and put money into the coffers. Now, that's from the political or civil side. Religiously, All religions or societies, cultures, ancient cultures had a system by which the society recognized that this man and woman and this woman or this man and these women, you know, in polygyny or polygyny, (coughs) that these people were now considered to be working as a unit. Yes. 
The Bible says a man would leave his mother and father and they would become one flesh. And the, so we had that binding of two flesh. In atonism, we have a binding of two flesh ceremony, an actual ritual ceremony. And in that ceremony, in our way of living, that ceremony says everything we talked about tonight comes to play. Mm. There are rules. Okay. It's not oh, you're gonna be with this sister and just dump them. You're gonna be with that brother and just dump them. And uh, you know, atonism. You know, that's no, 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 no. We re if we give you the binding of two flesh, we recognize you as together. Hmm. If you choose then to go to the courthouse and get the legal paper for legal purposes, that legal paper is only for legal purposes. Mm -hmm. It serves nothing else. It only says if this man and woman were legally married and this woman dies or this man dies, all of their property that's in their name goes to this person. If you have life insurance and the life insurance, I can put anybody on my life insurance. I can put any man or woman married or not on my life insurance mm -hmm. and make them that my sole beneficiary. But if I'm legally married and I haven't said who's to be my beneficiary, it automatically goes to my spouse. That's, it's, that's legal. That's paperwork. But if you're talking about culturally, we have a culture. Our culture, our religious identity says binding of two flesh. This is what it means. This is how it's done. This is what it symbolizes. This is what it represents to us. If I am a Jewish person, we have Jewish ceremony, Mazel Tov. If I am a Hindu, we have certain ceremonies for binding or becoming in the eyes of our community. Black people, because we've broken up our communities, we no longer have that. The Holy mm -hmm. Coptic Church, the Black Messiah, we have binding of two flesh. We have a system that says if these people want this ceremony, mm -hmm. they can go through with this ceremony. But this ceremony is not tied to this legal system in that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? It's recognized amongst us. And then the legal system will also recognize it because now all your documents you can now buy stuff together and move as a unit. Right. You follow? And it's sad mm -hmm. because unfortunately for a lot of melanated people, yes. they'll say, well, I want a, I want a real wedding. Right. They define that as being real. Yeah, I've done a binding of two flesh for a couple. And then they say, well, now I want a real wedding. And I'm like, well, what was that? <laughs> what well, did we just do? That? Was this a fake one? And right. they say, no, no, no. I want, you know, the one with the system. I said, well, then go ahead. But that's not who we are. Mm -hmm. And that system as a person who's 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 been through divorce, right? That system fails you every time, mm. because it's not designed. It, if it were designed for you to be together, then they wouldn't have a a, a paper. You know how expensive it is to get divorced. Yes. Right. It, it it's, it, when you're getting married, hundred dollars, hundred pounds, you get a marriage license. Mm -hmm. Divorce. Oh my gosh, thousands and thousands. Of, why? Because it's making more money. Yes, it's, a it's about money. <laughs> there's no reason why they can't make a divorce uh, paperwork the same hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Why do they make it so difficult? Because mm -hmm. it's about money. Right. So our system, we we, and I'm I'm not saying this is for everybody. If you're not in a tonus, you know, YOLO, do you right? Live the life, <laughs> <Yellow>. right? <You laughs> Yes. Okay. And um, I think you kind of answered this. Someone else was also asking about marriage and how you kind of tied the most high heavenly one to be involved <laughs> in the process of the binding of two flesh. And I think you kind of. Well, you keep the most high heavenly one involved by being involved in your local church, Kinesa, Ma synagogue. Where else do you see the visible manifestation of the divinity of the creator? We got so many people who call themselves spiritual, Muslim, Christian, Jew, atheist, whatever you call yourself, yoga. If you into yoga, then go to the, to the ashram. You know what I'm saying? Go to the place where yoga is practiced. If you're into meditation, go to the temple. If you're into the lodge or the fraternity, go there. If you're into the mosque, go there. If you're into the church, go there. But you, you can't disconnect from the, from the, you know, and I, and I understand why people often disconnect because of the, 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 the hypocrisy often found where people are not living what they teach. I get it. Mm -hmm. But for those of us that do live what we teach, I live what I teach. I do my best every day. And I, tell, and I challenge anyone to, to, to show me where, I, you know, I'm just purposely doing stupid, right? Mm -hmm. Do my best every day to live this way of life. So if you want to see 
a visible manifestation, a visible image. We say, you know, Christ was the visible image of the invisible God. So if I want to see that visible image, I got to go to the places where there's other women and men living it visibly. Mm. You understand? Mm-hmm. When I see people say, you know, I don't go to Kinesa because, you know, I'm just going through something. I'm like, you're, going, you, you're not going to make it. Why? Mm-hmm. Because you have to go amongst other people. When I see you, and I'm talking on Righteous Jewel, Jewel for Life podcast, The Vantage Point, I see you. I see a visible manifestation or reflection of the divinity. When you go natural, I got to go natural. If, 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 if I go natural, you got to go natural. If somebody watching... The most high is reflected in each and every person. But if we disconnect from those persons that are reflecting the divinity, then the most high will not be involved in the process of binding of two flesh. If me and my wife just stay in the house all day, we in love, we look in each other's eyes and we just batting our eyelashes and looking at each other. It ain't going to it ain't going to it ain't going to work. Mm. So as a man, I need to come in contact with brothers. As a woman, she needs to come in contact with sisters, sisters who are going to challenge them. Mm. Right. Because a woman can't make me a man no more than I can make her a woman. But mm. my brothers can make. That's why the Bible don't say, are you your your husband's keeper? Are mm-hmm. you your brother's keeper? Are you your sister's keeper? Sisters can push you towards greatness. Brothers can push me towards greatness. And then those two great people come together. That's right. When we disconnect from that place. You can't. The only way to keep the most high involved in the process of binding of two flesh is to attend the places where the visible manifestation of the Most High is present. Mm. Thank you so much, so much, so much. It's always a pleasure having you on. I don't even know if I gave you the a proper introduction today as I normally do. And we know this is Reverend Dr. A.J. Varma of the Holy Coptic Church of the Black Messiah International, written over 75 plus books. Just amazing. I never seen one question that was asked that he couldn't answer. So, you know, it's always a blessing to have you on. I want to take this opportunity for you to let us know any upcoming events. What do you have going on at this moment? How can people contact you? I see the um, website up now. And then there was also a question I think will go more towards the next event you have coming up. And so if we can, you know, introduce that to everyone and, and we'll ask that question at that time. Well, the first thing I always I tell anybody who's listening is again is it shows on, on the site on, on the screen, www.journeyhomegroup.com or the Holy Cryptic Church International. Um, I tell everyone also additionally I say to people, I am not an individual. I'm a part of a team. I move with a team. If you go to the AJVarma.com site we are a non-profit right because i got people out there thinking i'm making all this money because you know ajbarman.com like, hey, hey, non-profit it's a non-profit right you know, I, I do more volunteer than anything i don't get paid to do this all right but i understand where it leads um mm-hmm. but there's a team of women and men if you go to the ajbarman.com uh you will see the team you it literally has a thing that says spell that team. please well on the screen a j v a r m a h dot com yeah, right mm-hmm. um and you literally if you go there you get to meet the team there's there's ladies and there's um, regal ladies and noble men who are involved from different walks of life different skills different levels of education different ages that are working to make this 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 moment of awakening this 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 moment of liberation to make it a reality so i tell anybody that's the best thing to do you can also find us at aj varma on facebook um, there's just there's multiple ways I tell people you can reach out and we'll always do our best to point you in the right direction and ultimately read. I tell people you got to read, right? You can listen to a lecture all day. We talked for about two hours and you'll probably remember about 15 minutes of it. Mm-hmm. But if you read, you can go back. If you highlight, you can go back. If you underline, you can go back. Mm-hmm. You can go back to go forward. And ultimately that's the only way. If people, you know, if you're not tired, of, of the, the lies, if you're not tired of the, the breakups, if you're not tired of the miseducation, then when will you get tired? I don't know mm-hmm. what it's going to take to get you know enough people to say I'm tired, but I'm, I'm personally tired. Yes. Any upcoming events? And then I see a text message that's asking if they are interested in the course that you mentioned earlier, how would they get involved? Do they text you and just to, you know, get their information to you and then you'll let them know when it begins or, you know, how does that well, go? First thing first, we have uh, what's called revamp. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we did it last year. This is the second year we're doing it. Revamp is about mental wellness in the, in the melanated community. Um, and it's about empowering us that, yes, we've been broken. We've been scarred. But we're still here. Mm-hmm. And it's OK to say I've been hurt. It's OK to say men and women that I'm not, you know, that I'm not 100 mm-hmm. percent. It's OK to hurt, you know, because the, the medical establishment has made it to where black people, they say black people don't feel pain. They treat us like we don't see, you know, we don't feel pain. They send us home hurting because they don't see that we feel pain. Mm-hmm. And that was a part of slavery. You know, the research done on black people. So revamp says we do feel pain and we feel mental, uh, emotional, spiritual, psychological pain. And we've got to address that. And it's a conversation. And that's the next event. I believe it comes up May twentieth, if I'm if I'm mm-hmm. if I'm correct. And when we is going to be online, I think it's like ten dollars, nine dollars. I'm not I'm not sure what the price, but you'll see the commercials coming out. And it's a way to put black practitioners, melanated practitioners, with melanated people, but melanated practitioners that are conscious with melanated people who are embracing consciousness, because mm-hmm. there's a little different dynamic. Right. Mm-hmm. There's a different dynamic when you sit with a Dr. Gijan T, who's a clinical psychiatrist, but he's conscious. Right. right. If you just get a black psychiatrist or psychologist and they're not conscious, they're not going to really treat you because they're going to. You might say, man, I go places. I feel people are following me. They're like, no, no one's following you. No, actually, you're black. If you go to most stores, someone's following no, you. So you're watching. Following you. Right. So you're not paranoid. So that is it, it kind of puts those type of clinicians whether from uh, uh, Dr. Dias Tucker, who does uh, uh, chiropractic, put them with patients who are conscious. So conscious patient, conscious counselor, conscious uh, Dr. Nicole Ford do, does clinical mm-hmm. counseling. We're trying to put black people and have real conversations on that day. So that's revamp. You're going to start seeing the commercials over the next few days. We're telling mm-hmm. people you definitely want to attend, especially if you're a person who's going through, like all of us, myself included, problems in here. Right. Because the, the boogeyman, you know, the little white boy, little white girl found their way in through mm. television, through movies, through uh, uh, music. And they're in here and they're running around loose in the hallways, just breaking glass and knocking lockers. <laughs> and kicking pot. The ropes, right? <laughs> and so revamp is about that. OK, um, we have the, the, the program that we're talking about. We, we call it uh, the pieces of the pieces of the puzzle self mastery series. That'll be coming up, like I said, after our fasting month, which ends June 20th. Mm-hmm. We'll pick that up in July. And the advertisements will go out on how people can register and which books okay. we'll be reading. And there's a whole thing that at the end of it, we will actually know not just love, lies, liberation, because that's a different thing. But what do these greats teach? So mm-hmm. we can change the way we, we, we actually think. We did love uh, the pieces of the Puzzle Self Mastery series last year. And we read nine books, The Message to the Black Man by Barbara Elijah Muhammad, Philosophies and Opinions of Marcus Moshe Garvey or Africa for the Africans by Amy Jacques oh. Garvey, The Compensatory Council Racist Code by Neely Fuller, ISIS Papers by Francis Cress Wilson, all of these are babies and babas, doctors in their respective rights, Africana Womanism by Dr. Clonora hudson Weems. Uh, Black Man's Guide and Black Woman's Guide to Understanding Each Other by Shahrazad Ali, Mm-hmm. Um, the Need for a Black Bible by uh, Dr. Ben y- Joseph Ben Yochanan. Um, who oh, I'm trying to remember who was one by Dr. Henry Clark. Um, who uh, betrayed the black? Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 who the the black mm. liberation oh, dealing with the black liberation? The black the whole idea of black liberation. Who how did it become betrayed? Um, and there's one I'm I'm, I'm leaving someone out. Right. But there was nine of them. Mm-hmm. And then we read the another book called Slave Mind. Are you slave mind, student mind or God mind? Did which we, I think we have two sessions I'll be doing over these next few weeks mm-hmm. with those who people that were in it. And so out of that, it shifted the consciousness of our organization. Mm-hmm. And those people who went through it and the videos and the DVDs are available or the streams are available. But it shifted the collective consciousness of those 70 or 80 or 100 people who went through it. We came out and you just you, you'll never be the same. Well, we got to do the same thing 
relationship wise, because I want I personally want better relationship with the people who I deal with as the women in my life. I want a better relationship. Mm-hmm. I don't feel just because I wrote a book that I've reached this ultimate Osiris level, you know, relationship <laughs> with the people in my life. I want a I want a better relationship. I, I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better father. I don't think I've mastered fathering. Right. Um, uh, I, the way I raised my oldest, I think I did a good job. I, I don't mm-hmm. know, they might say different, right? One day, but I think I did a great job with them. Or, but I and now I look at the one year old, and I want to do a better job. Right? right? Uh, mm-hmm. Conditions are different, but I've got to find a way to be a better father to him. Right? There's things I will repeat, and there's things I said, mm, okay, let me try this way a little different, just a little mm-hmm. bit. Right? Mm-hmm. Let me just try this thing. I want to be a better father. I want to, I want to be a better husband. I don't think, I, like I said, I don't think I've mastered husbandry yet. You know, mm-hmm. I want to be able to grow food better. I want to, I want to be able to be a better lover. I want to be able to be a, a, a better, a better, just a better person to be around. You know, some days I think I might be a little miserable, or not miserable in how I treat, but just I might just be mm-hmm. silent, right? And I don't want to be stuck in that silent mode. I want to figure, you know, and I say that. If I can declare that publicly, now I got accountability, so I can I can work on me. Mm-hmm. Right? People people want to do a silent auction, right? You you don't want to talk about what you want to do, so nobody holds you accountable. Right. But if you but can, as soon as the cameras are off, it's... yeah, then you can go be. So I, I say <laughs> things publicly so I can be held accountable by me by me. I don't care what anybody else feels mm-hmm. or says. Mm-hmm. I know I've said it. I know it's on record. So now I got to work on me. Mm-hmm. And as long as I'm willing to do that, when it's all said and done, the day they tuck me in that urn, right after I've been cremated mm-hmm. or put in the ground, and the worms are working with me, uh, when that day should—that's how it is. The day that that happens, I would have mm-hmm. left the legacy. I pray. Yes. Yes. Thank you so very much. And so we're going to wrap it up for today. And we want to encourage everyone to just stay in contact. Visit the websites, www.ajvarma.com, journeyhomegroup.com. Get your copy of the Love Lies Liberation book. Um, Join the master course, join Revamp and and just support, you know. And so we want to thank you again, Dr. Join the Holy Cryptic Church. Join the the Holy Cryptic Church of the Black Messiah. The only church that advocates religion, economics, labor, sex, gender, education, law, war, security, entertainment, and politics. We are a teaching church that are covenant keepers, not covenant breakers. We Mm -hmm. love black love. I love black women. I love black men. I love black people. And I don't have to love nobody else. I don't hate nobody else, but I don't have to love them. I don't hate Canaanites or Europeans, but I don't love them. And I echo that statement. Yeah. It's okay. okay I don't yeah. gotta, just because I don't hate you, only I gotta love you. I don't hate lions, but I don't mean I'm gonna jump in the cage and, and go kiss yeah. one in the mouth. So. That's true. So Jay Love it. We see your question. We're gonna push that over to revamp and make sure that it's answered for you. I appreciate everyone who tuned in to today and stay with us this whole time. It's Friday. Go get some food, go relax, go enjoy, go read, do something. Enjoy the rest of your night, Dr. Varma. And until next time. And if you got somebody you love, go have sex. (laughs) Only he would say that, but um, all right. (laughs) Uh, I figured. Until next time, peace.